Hey, what's up, ecosystem? You guys ready for Repo Car Hauling Roundtable? This is Tuesday Nights Live on Auto Transport Intel. I'm Jay, your host. Welcome back to the show. Welcome back again, Auto Transport Intel. I'm Jay, your host, and you are joining me always on Tuesday nights live. We're live every Tuesday night at eight o'clock, and uh, we just saw the car hauler, which means we're here. We're officially in. We got people coming in the live chat, and let me say this: if you are new to the show, we get new people every week. Now, uh, I start off by rolling the car hauler, and then I give you the intro and the welcome back. And then I'm going to jump into the live chat. We're going to say hello in the live chat. Uh, the live chat is a big part of the show. So I really want you to join the live chat, be a part of the show. So I got a monitor over here. I'm looking and I'm seeing people coming in. And uh, of course, I'm talking to you here. So we're on YouTube. Um, it's every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock. And we got, uh, you know, whether you're a car hauler, a uh, shipper, dispatcher, broker, uh, lead generator, or maybe you're a new car shipping customer. You're welcome to the show, and this is car shipping information. Um, so we're also going to do some industry news. You know, this is stuff I pull off of Facebook, memes, news, um, information. Sometimes it's funny, sometimes it's sad. Um, but, you know, you know, whatever uh, floats your boat, that's what we're going to do in the industry news. Um, so we'll do that for a little bit and then we will go into we'll talk briefly about coaching and merch That's right. I updated it. So you guys here now you guys know that it used to be consultations and merch now it's coaching and merch because really we're focusing on coaching rather than a Consultation per se a consultation. I think is is a kind of a one-time deal whereas coaching is ongoing and um, the, we're building the program and actually uh, I see Ty in the live chat. Ty is kind of taking the lead. As you guys know, if you've sent me an email, I'm behind on my emails. I'm behind on my phone calls. I've been working on, what I've been working on is I'm, I'm really trying to grow the um, advertising, merchandising, referral marketing part of this channel because that's what's going to keep this channel going. So um, anything you can do to help is, is, is really uh, appreciated and that's why I have merchandise. And then we're going to go into, we have the CTS live testimonial. We have another one tonight. Um, that's how we're going to kick off the show. We're going to talk to Draw Shea. And um, with really great story. Actually, we don't know what he's going to say because I, I just, I, he, he said, hey, I got some great news. And I said, don't talk about it <laughs> because we want to talk about it live on the show. But it's great because he wasn't sure. He, he was like, you know, what is this? I don't know if I really need coaching. I don't know if I want it. I don't even know, you know, I'm not sure what I want to do. But we talked to him, and it turns out he's got good news. So he's going to share that tonight, which is awesome. And then, for the main part of the show, we are going to do Repo Car Hauling Roundtable. Now, um, this show, what I'm trying to do with the show is move it towards a, like a guest panel type show. You know I have interviews. I've done a lot of phone interviews. I've done some video interviews. But I really want to move it into um, having panels like, you know, you see on like CNN or Fox Business News or whatever. Um, that's what we're going to start doing more of. And because uh, I think it really helps develop 
the depth of the topic that we're trying to there's a lot to talk about it i i love that i've been asked gosh don't you think you're gonna run out of stuff to talk about no actually no the answer would be no um i i realize that could be a fear or gosh what are we gonna do but there is so much to talk about in fact when i was making the uh, my recent video i realized there is so much to talk about it's insane so uh, so I'm excited about that. So Repo Car Hauling Roundtable. We're going to have Anthony Biagini. He has a repo lot. We're going to have Ziggy Keller. He runs Auto Transport Everything. And we're going to have Dave Williams, who I work with, and we've picked up many repos. In fact, do I get the hammer? Do I, leave, do I let the hammer sit? I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully I can let the hammer sit, but I do have the Auto Transport Intel repo hammer standing by just in case things get crazy. Um, hey, listen, can you hear me okay? Can you see me okay? Let me know, keep me posted on if you're having any issues accessing the stream. Um, I was using restream.io, but tonight I'm just going straight to YouTube, which is going straight to you without the, um, cause I had a couple videos ago, I had these latency audio issues in the post I don't know if it was in the show. I don't think it was in the show. It came up in the post. So just let me know if you see anything that looks a little strange. Um, and uh, so here we go. Let's do. Let's go into the live chat. Um, the one and only is with us first in. Thank you, one and only. I appreciate it. Part of the core. Uh, tuning in every week. Um, long time listener, long time caller, whatever he says. Definitely you are. You are the one and only. So thank you, man. Thanks for being here for me. Um, Clarksville Trucking is with us. Dave Williams at Clarksville Trucking. Um, so thanks for checking in, Dave. And I got, I don't know, I had something on my phone, but I think I'm good. I was checking my messages. So I think we're good to go. Um, so hopefully we are. So thanks for joining us, Dave. Looking forward to a strength, strength, strong debate tonight. Should be interesting. Um, and the, the one and only gave me a drum roll. I appreciate that. That's really cool. Matt at Anytime Towing Vermont. He's here. Good evening, Matt. Um, we're going to do another CTS testimonial. Might remind you of when we first spoke. And um, I think it's time for another follow-up. So Ty is on that part. And um, looking forward to looking forward to keeping the, um, keeping the train rolling. Um, you know, as we think about this with, you know, coaching, advice, mentor, when I talk to people at random and they mention that they have a mentor, it has an extra level of meaning to me now because it's really helpful to have a mentor. If you don't have a mentor, let us know because maybe, just maybe, um, it'd be helpful to bounce ideas and problems off of somebody other than, I don't know, the dog or... Uh, a family member or um, a drinking buddy. But, you know, hey, you know, whatever floats your boat. All right. Hey, a trucking market trucking answers made it, man. Thanks for joining, Mark. You know, I missed your show on Monday and I'm ashamed of it. Um, it's bad. It's, it's very bad. You don't want to miss trucking answers. Um, if you have trucking questions, Mark has trucking answers. It's true. Gets a lot of people joining the live chat. Really, it's pretty awesome. So you got to check that out. That's on Mondays at 1 o'clock Eastern, noon Central, every Monday. So, and we're going to be at Matt's together. We're, we're going to, we'll be in separate booths or something like that. But anyways, I was on the phone with uh, truckingshow.com, Matt's 2019. I was on the phone with him today. So good stuff. Ty, welcome to the show. Stand by, dude. We're going to be talking in about 20 minutes or so with Draw Shea. That's going to be awesome. California Ram Transport, good evening. Welcome to the show, man. I appreciate that. I don't think we've had you here before. And so um, if you have a question or anything like that, then, you know, we welcome for seeing people for the first time here. It's pretty awesome. So thanks for joining. I really appreciate it. And I know it's a long show. You know, if you tune out, go take a nap, we'll probably still be here. And then so the repo car hauling starts in about 50 minutes. So until then, we're going to do some intro stuff and then the uh, CTS live testimonial. If you don't know much about CTS, you're definitely going to want to hear Drache talk. Hey, and if you haven't hit the like button yet, 
Uh, Beatrice, hey, JBB from Vizio Transport Services checking in. Love your show. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. That that stuff makes my day. I do. I schedule my week around Tuesday nights now. Um, you know, it's Thursday, it's Friday. I'm like, oh, I got plenty of time. Then suddenly it's Monday. I'm like, man, I don't even have a topic yet. And it just so happens that tonight's topic uh, is because Anthony, he contacted me. I think it was Friday. I missed his call over the weekend. We finally spoke yesterday, and I'm like, that's it, man. We've been trying to hook up. This is great. We're going to talk repo car hauling. So if you have an idea for a show, or if you've seen my recent video, or if you just if you want to be on the show, or you think you have a product or service that needs to be in front of the car haulers, let me know. Hey, maybe maybe I can help you finally teach your teach the car haulers and the audience and everyone how to use your product. Okay. Um that was that was pretty specific, Jay. Okay, AJ Cole's with us. Hey, looking forward to the show. Welcome to the show, AJ. I've seen you in here, man. Welcome to the show. Thanks for saying hello and thanks for joining us. Appreciate that. Uh Bad Apples was with us. What what up, Jay? Happy Tuesday. What's up, Bad Apples? Um that reminds me, I think it was we were talking a week or two ago and um I can't remember. There was a topic on my mind, and I, I think I just lost it. If there was a topic that we were going to discuss, please let me know what it was. Anytime Towing VT. Uh, oh, Tice Marshall, loud and clear. All right, Tice is with us. First time, I think. So welcome to the show, Tice. I appreciate you tuning in. Again, if there's something we can do for you, if you have a question. You know, uh, people have talked about needing to sell their trucks, and they post it in here, and suddenly somebody's talking about it. It's great, man. Do it. Uh, think of this as your second Facebook. Okay. Uh, Serge is with us. My belt broke. Have been driving for two hours with an alternator on 12.3 volts. Well, Serge, I talked to Serge earlier today. We're getting excited. We're six weeks away from me showing up in Massachusetts. We're going to do a show live from West Springfield, Massachusetts. That is January. Uh, dang it. I don't have it in front of me, but it's Jan it's a Tuesday in January. I think it's January 22nd. That is going to be cold, man. But it's going to be a good one, man. From Crepes Tea House. Uh, so, what? okay, so let's see. Melvin Hughes. Hey, what's up, Melvin? Welcome to the show. I feel like I've seen your name in here before, but I don't know, man. Uh, but welcome to the show. If, again, if you have something you want to say, if you have a question, and I appreciate you tuning in, I really do. Uh, let's see, anytime towing my busy season, but I'm working on it. And I realize if you got to go, like you had to go last time, man, you got to go. Duty calls, right? Uh, demerit. I got a demerit from Mark. That's just typical. I've <laughs> uh, been watching Mark. Good. I mean, it is, man. Mark's got a great channel. And um, what's cool is Mark and I, I think Mark and I, and then Anthony at Shaggy's, the three of us, um, kind of working together to expand as a channel, moving parts, like continents on the earth. Okay. Uh, Irvine Transport. Hey, what's up, Irvine Transport? It's Keith at Irvine Transport. Um, so what's going on? You know, where are you driving at? What are you loading? What are you unloading? Is it Teslas? I don't know. Um, so let's see. Uh, trucking answers. Tickets for Matt's now available. Yes. So it's now December. And you can go to truckingshow.com. You can get your Matt's tickets. Go to Matt's 2019. I don't know. You know, I don't know. Each year, it seems like there's a small, you know, uh, car hauling contingency. But we're going to be a part of it. I'm not saying we're going to make it happen. But I am going to say we're going to be a part of it. Uh, so get your tickets for Matt's. I think it's free, right? I think it's just free registration. Go to truckingshow.com. Car Hall at 38, CH38 checking in. What's up, Car Hall at 38? Thank you for checking in. You know, I was looking when I was editing my video. I saw you've been here a long time. I think from the beginning you were tuning in. So I appreciate that. Thank you for doing that. It, it's really, it's really cool to see uh, longtime listeners, first time callers, last time listeners, never again callers. No, I'm just kidding, caller. Uh, Thais, you said it. Yes, you said it. It's right, too. <laughs> nerds on 18 wheels. What's up, nerds? Welcome back to the show. Sure, I know your name. Um, and I appreciate you tuning in. And do you, do you guys look forward to Tuesdays? You know, how how does this show fit into your schedule? 
I know some folks are driving and they can't tune in, or some people maybe that maybe they're just dozing off to sleep and this is the bedtime story, or maybe maybe you just got up and you're running security somewhere. Uh, I don't know. I really don't know. So let me know. That's really interesting. Try out of knowledge. Well said. Try out of knowledge. I feel like having a scepter in my hand. The triad of knowledge. Um, really? Really, Jay? Uh, bad apples. Not sure what were all over the place last week. You and Dave were busting my bubble. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, you know, um, last week's show was really interesting. And actually, as soon as the show ended, I pretty much started. I've been editing all week. So, whew, man, editing makes me crazy. Uh, but it's got to get done, you know? It's like the driving. The driving has got to get done. Um, Clarksville Trucking, you forgot to call me back. Oh, you forgot to call? Oh, you forgot to call me back? Uh, does Does Mark have a t-shirt that says, or whatever? <laughs> uh, he should, shouldn't he? So, be trucking answers, and on the back, or whatever. That would be awesome. That's a great idea, man. Take notes, Mark. That's a great idea for a show. Ready for another great show, Car Shipper? Well, thanks for tuning in, man. We gotta, um, we gotta hook up sometime, Joe. Um, we played some phone tag, so I look forward to when we can actually get a chance to talk more. In fact, you know what, Car Shipper Joe, will you do me a favor? Send me an email, autotransportintel at gmail.com. and that goes for everybody. Everybody, send me an email, autotransportintel at gmail.com. because um, what I want to do is I want to. Um, I want to share recent information with you, so please send me an email. You've been watching the show, Videos of Drivers. Does anyone that use hotels use CLC card? Is a CLC card for major discounts on hotels? I've noticed a lot of guys pay full price. You know what? Um, that's interesting you say that because somebody was talking about a hotel and the dis lodging discount card. I'd like to talk to um, a company. I found a company on... It was in the Matt's sponsors list, and it was Hotels for You. And but I went to Hotels for You. I don't know if I don't know if they're there anymore or they changed. But I'd like to um, connect with more discount cards. So let me know if there's somebody I can talk to. Auto Transport Intel at gmail.com. I really appreciate that. Um, forgot to call Serge back. Oh, well, you know what? He's here. So no need to call him back. He's here. Honey, what's he talking about? Oh my God, that is hilarious, dude. Yeah, I love to say that. I do. It is funny because I I I, I know how that is when you are, you you know, you're watching something and um and your significant other is thinking, what is he doing? Meanwhile, she's watching like Bachelorette and Desperate Housewives or whatever. And you're thinking, what is she watching? clclodging.com. How cool. clclodging.com. All right, well, I clicked the link, and that'll launch a page, and I'll check into that. If you know somebody there, uh, check this out. 30 40 a night for rooms. Wow, that's pretty good. That is, that's a good price. Uh, is that bed bugs included? I kid. That's not funny. Um, all right, well, that's kind of funny. Okay, honey. Um, let's go to industry news. We're late. Oh, man, we're like 10 minutes late. That's all right. You know what? I could probably blow through the industry news pretty quick. <laughs> I'll bet you can, cowboy. Okay. So, oh, that's not the page. Let's get over here. Okay. So there we go. It takes a special breed to ride the steed, risking their lives to fulfill your needs. So remember, each time you sit down to eat... To be thankful for those who sit in these seats. It's like a Christmas story. I'm a trucker. I don't stop when I'm tired. I stop when a computer tells me to. That's a little different. Uh, Christmas is going to be late. Santa is on e-log now. It's kind of a bummer. You know, I got my... Where's my e-log at? Oh, yeah, here we go. I got my egg timer ELD. You guys know about egg timer ELD? It is cheap. It is quick. And it will get you a violation for sure, but it's funny and true. Honey, fries are up, <laughs> and my e-log says I'm late. Uh, if you can park it and not look back as you walk away, you bought the wrong truck. It's kind of cool. You know, you look at it. All right. Why is he in the middle of a dirt? Did he? Uh, did he wash that? Yeah, he washed it. 
Uh, brace yourselves, everyone is about to forget how to drive. I like Game of Thrones memes, and I welcome memes. If you got a meme you want to share, you, are you tired of Facebook groups that won't let you post memes? Me too. Auto Transport Intel. Give me your memes, man, because I'm putting them in the news. You know, a lot of these are coming from Shaggy's now. That's Anthony over at Shaggy's Consulting and Training. All right! My new IFTA stickers just came. Just shoot your eye out. When DOT knocks at your door. Kind of a... What in the world? Life in the truck scene. This is so true. Tires, me. DOT tickets, me. Truck parts, me. Fuel, me. Okay? And now here's, here's a juxtaposition. You guys ready for the contrast? How I feel when someone says... I'm just a dumb truck driver. Woody Harrelson, counting his money. Which one suits you? Uh, 18, 15, 13, 10, 5x4, 6x4, or none of the above. That's actually pretty interesting. That's an interesting one. That took a lot of work, actually. I think. Uh, oh, hey, what's up, Grant? Hey, man, Grant, uh, check this out. You're, you've got a live chat comment in my recent video. I noticed. Pretty interesting. We'll send you an email shortly. Let's connect. Yeah, we should. We should. We should. What I want to do, Joe, is have you on the show for an interview sometime. Find out what you're up to. But really, that goes for all you guys. If you want to do a live interview, if you got something to talk about, everybody's got something to talk about. Come on. Look at me. I'm st I'm talking into a camera for three hours. That's nuts. Uh, that awkward moment when your when your balls touch. Even just the, you know what's really weird? Just looking at this is awkward. Isn't that weird? I mean, I feel kind of awkward. You guys feel awkward? Let's move on, shall we? Uh, beach life. You always hear about uh, people taking up the fuel island for stupid reasons. I can't even believe this one. What's he doing? I, you know what? My guess is he's, he's, he's just kind of, you know... Uh, I don't know. I don't know what he's doing. I really don't. Uh, Google Maps is wrong. That's really funny. I've never seen that one, and I'm, I'm assuming that's not a hack. You know, you've seen how signs get hacked, or or people, you know, do it in Photoshop. But signs have been hacked. Um, many ways, I don't think that's a hack. I think that's real. I think they look, you know, kind of in the northwest, and the map is wrong. Don't you hate that? Dispatcher, a dispatcher made that sign. Me trying to fit a thousand miles in one day of vlogs. <laughs> that is so true, isn't it? That is pretty much what it's like. Yeah, man. Uh, oh, industry news is almost over, I think. Oh, okay, we got a few minutes. That's cool. What else we got here? Oh, yeah, that's a, uh, that can't be a real thing. It's a tank boot. Okay. Um, that's when your wiener slides off the road. It's not good. You don't want that. What? Couldn't they park it for the night? Was was <laughs> was the promotion really that important? I don't know. But now your wiener's in the snow. Um. Okay, so this is yeah. Um. Uh, oh, I didn't get the. All right, well, somebody hit him at the... You guys know how this works. Somebody hit him at the truck stop. I think the caption said, don't you hate it when you park when you have a parking spot and then somebody hits you? Is it... Like, you need that problem. Yeah, we'll talk about that tonight in the Repo Car Hauling Roundtable because I tell you what, you never know what's going to happen. That's why I don't want an appointment. That's why I got to burn rubber to my appointment. Like, dude, what is he doing? I mean, there's the Mountie. Oh, uh, well, let's go to the next one. Burning rubber. I didn't know car haulers went that fast. Black smoke don't mean it's broke. Black smoke don't mean it's broke. Uh, actually, I, I heard that white smoke is better than black smoke. Um, And then this one, you know, it's weird how the guy... 
How many guys are standing there with their phones out taking pictures? While this, they say that, I don't even know if they know if this guy lived. But he basically, he backed his truck of pipes onto a barge that wasn't locked down, chained up, what have you. He, nobody checked that? So anyways, everything went in the water. It wasn't good. Damn Tesla. That's pretty funny, Keith. Um, oh, speaking of, man, this is bad, isn't it? But you know, what really caught my eye about this news story is that it's almost like when the white collar workers, are you with me? I know you're thinking this, or, or you definitely are now. When the white collar workers lose their jobs, there sure is a lot more press. I am not trying to draw any weird distinctions, although I've already stuck my foot in the mud. But, yeah, white collar workers got more press than blue collar workers losing their jobs. So anyways, uh, but it sucks all around. I mean, it sucks. Uh, Detroit, Lordstown, Oshawa, Warren, and Baltimore. That sucks, man. And it was the Chevy Cruze, wasn't it? Um, oh, here, wait, this is interesting. Let's see. Resources allocated to electric and autonomous vehicle programs will double in the next two years. Yeah. So, you know, can we get that? Jay, we can't see it. Um, autonomous vehicles, right? Getting the attention. Autonomous vehicles. Battery electric vehicle architectures are a priority for GM. It's expected that more than 75% of GM's global sales volume will come from five vehicle architectures by early next decade. Anyways, pretty interesting. Soak that. Let that soak in. Uh, hey, have you all heard about Tesla buying out United Road? Um, I have not. I, that's why I'm sharing this. I have not heard that. So, Keith, you are a prognosticator with your comments. Can you predict the future? If you can, let us know about Tesla and United Road. I don't know. I really don't know. But... What, Tesla, LNR, United Road Fleet Car. Now, those two things, I don't think those are rumors. In fact, United Road Fleet Car is not a rumor. Tesla, LNR is barely a rumor. I think both of those things are true. And then, uh, now, uh, Run Buggy is talking about if you can refer a friend to use Run, Run Buggy. Check that out. Mark sent out an email for about Run Buggy, and um, you know, you can get into the referral business. That's actually that's something that I'm I'm trying to push more on this show. And I want to say this too. You know, I put out the video. I just put out my video about the social media networking, the marketing. Again, uh, don't be afraid of that because we want we want businesses to join our community in a good way, because if they can help us get discounts get better access to better resources and material, and also help this channel grow, I call that a win-win-win. And that's not something you hear very often. All right, it is 829. Man, we are on schedule. So let's talk about CTS Strategy 1. That is a $100 auto transport business coaching one hour with me and Ty. And, um, you know, I don't know if we're going to change your life or not, but we are going to help. Uh, you know, it's cool how we get into day to day and, you know, day after day and we're doing our thing and we, we forget after a certain amount of time's gone by, we forget to look back and re-strategize, re-jigger, you know, get back under the hood of, or, or, or access the repairs of something that we just, we've been delaying or putting off for too long. We all have that memo sitting around here somewhere. Well, CTS Business Coaching if you're a new car hauler, we want to help. And if you're an existing car hauler that you think maybe, you know, maybe there's a better way to do this, such as, you know, freaking out, staring at Central all day, maybe there's a better way to do this. Let us know. Um, if you want to help the channel, well, I got the Mix Mix. You know, everybody loves a Mix Mix. Come on, everybody loves it. Um, I got the channel. My channel's so bright that it makes the screen dark. That's right. And on the back, alert today, alive tomorrow. We see it every day in the news. People just aren't being careful. That's why this is Road Worker Yellow. It's a pretty high quality t-shirt. I know it's way overpriced. I'm going to try and bring the price down, I don't know, sometime next year. 
Um, I need to get a, uh, let's see here. I need to get, um, I just need to, I need to, I need to improve the whole merchandising process and pricing, but I do have shirts and um, if you get the mix mix, we'll also do a phone call. And if you want to help me out and get the VIP, you know, the VIP, actual pickup, actual delivery, you know, when the vehicle says it's in Little Rock and it's in Phoenix. Well, anyways, you can get the uh, Auto Transport Intel mug. Now, what you're doing is you're donating. You're helping the channel because, I mean, I can, I can use the help. Um, I got most of the content figured out. It's just uh, funding it, still working on that. So, anyways, um, yeah, I got a paypal.me forward slash auto transport intel. Let me know if you can help. I also take super chats during the live stream right now, but the problem is YouTube takes 30% of it. So, I mean, you know, without them, you know, it's an access thing, but it's pretty hefty. Ah, I get it. Uh, or if you're in Kansas City, dude, I'm in Kansas City. You're driving through Kansas City. Come on, who doesn't drive through Kansas City? Let's have barbecue. Let's make a video. And uh, let's get together and brainstorm. That'd be cool. Okay, it is 8.32. So what we're going to do now is I need a minute to... I need to invite... Um, oh, yeah. So here's what I got to do. Okay, this is going to be... Stay tuned. Bear with me. This is going to get a little shocking. Okay. All right. All right, don't freak out. Okay. I'm just kidding. Okay, so what I need to do is start. I'm starting a video. Alrighty. All right, I'm going to join with computer audio. And I'm going to start up a video meeting here. So I'm going to I'm going to invite some attendees. I'm going to invite, man, what is what is he? It's like I'm watching table tennis. Okay. Oh yeah, that's right. I'm over here. Man. That week goes by fast. Okay, so let's move this, invite by Gmail, and we got, I'm going to send out my invitations, and what we're going to do is we're going to get um, Ty and Draw Shea in here, and we're going to do a CTS live testimonial here in about a minute. Let me just finish getting these invites, and then we'll run a, um, we'll run a, uh, we'll run a video while we wait for them to check in. All right, so then Draw Shea, you're going to call. Ty, you're going to, you can either call or join by video. All right, so those invitations have been sent. So we'll wait for them. And while we're waiting, let's do, or let's do this. Let's do that. And let's do, oh yeah. Hey, Mark, this one's for you, buddy. Oh. To mention that's Dave from Auto Transport Intel. Jay runs a live show on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. on YouTube. You should check it out. Jay does everything car hauling. That stuff I don't know anything about, but Jay knows everything about it. So if you want to haul cars, that seems like it'd be interesting hauling all these different kind of cars like Ferraris and uh, probably a bunch of used cars from auto auctions. Whatever it is, whatever makes the money, go check out Jay at 8 p.m. tomorrow on YouTube. I'm there too, right? Watching. Uh, the show. So it's pretty fascinating. Two, three hours. He brings industry experts in and everything, right? So love it. All right, cool. So there's Mark. Uh, that's a strange. Okay, so that's me. I'm just waiting for these other guys to show up. So let's do a. Um, let's do. Have you guys seen this one? You've seen this one. Now, I did that video. I don't know about you guys, but man, I love eggs over easy and hash browns and sausage and coffee and bacon and biscuits and gravy. Man, I love a good breakfast. Big breakfast, Waffle House. I love, you know, Waffle Houses, man, whoever put those around the country, smart. Dude, Cracker Barrel, you can find me at Cracker Barrel chowing down for sure. So, anyways, I, that's why I made that video. I was making eggs, I was drinking coffee, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to make a video out of this. And so I did. Uh, let's see, who else we got in the live chat here? By the way, we're, we're waiting for, um, we'll get, uh, we'll get Drache and Ty in here in a minute. 
Uh, let's see here. Okay, let's see. Oh, Grant, you're in Southern Car Southern South Carolina. All right, man. Whereabouts? What's going on? How's the weather? How's the transport? You moving any repo? Let me know. Uh, hey, Pat, Michael McCaldy is with us, man. What's going on? Welcome back to the show. We haven't seen you in a while. I know you try to make it in, and so I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, you've been with us a long time, part of the core, and I do I appreciate you tuning in. I really do. Um, oh, the dispatcher you had sucks. Well, you know, it's tough, man. It is tough to be a dispatcher. I, I got to say, that's actually, this channel started with me complaining about dispatching. Dispatching is hard, um, and you're expected. There's so much expected of you, and the problem is you're staring at Central Dispatch all day. Let me tell you. Don't get me started, man. Oh, man, I've, I've been freaking out, staring at Central all day. You know, you're dying for something to show up. and or, or, you know what happens? You decide on a route, and so you get an anchor load and maybe another car, and you're dying for other good cars to show up. They're not showing up. Finally, something shows up. Somebody else gets it. Or the car has, like, ugh, there's issues, you know, Either the pickup is way off, or the delivery is way off, or it's not available till tomorrow, or you need the 24-hour notice. It's crazy, man. Dispatching blows, dude. It really, it's really, really hard. Anyways, off just staring at Central Dispatch all day, which is not recommended. But anyways, I'm just saying. So there's my uh, there's my spiel. Oh, where's the ELD Kool-Aid? Yeah, man, what's up? Ah, uh, yeah. Just enjoying... Hey, what's up, Times? Just enjoying some ELD Kool-Aid. Oh, here we go. Let's see here. Um, put these. Can you hear me? Okay. So while you're joining on the audio, I think you can hear me, but I can't hear you yet. That's okay. We got some more... Uh, oh, Miguel says, what's up? Hey, what's up, Miguel? Haven't seen you in the show in a while, so thanks for tuning in. That's awesome. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining the show. Now, hey, what's up? Uh, okay, hey man, that's what support is all about, dude. I appreciate it. I really do. And um, so many of us are here on Tuesday nights together, and and it's growing, and it really it's really cool. Um, hey, what's up? Okay, so then yeah, YouTube is big on giving take, but it takes like mostly yeah. It I well. But, I mean, I gotta say, without YouTube, I wouldn't have the channel. Hey, Ty, can you hear me okay? Okay, but can, say mic check. Mic check. Okay, cool. All right, there you are. All right, I just wanted to make sure. All right. Um, all right, so, Ty, we are, Drache should be joining us any minute. So, um, we're just going to hang out and wait for him. Um, let's see. Mark says, hashtag close up. Then he says exclamation mark grits. You know, you know, it's strange, Mark. I can't. I, Ty, do you eat grits? I can't eat grits. I get nothing on. I get nothing. But but there are some people that just swear by grits. If you add some a lot of butter and a lot of sugar, that's what everybody it, says. But it'll work. Okay, but if you gotta add a lot of butter and a lot of sugar, is it really a food? <laughs> I mean, I don't get, I don't really get that because I think I could probably, I think I could probably chew on a carburetor if there was enough butter and sugar. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. I don't, I don't, I just don't, I don't really get it. But you know what? That's okay. That's all right. Ah, uh, let's see here. Need a bit, you know what? I think now that I said that, Mark and probably other people are going to explain to me what I'm missing with grits. Uh, need an ELD Kool Aid glass to go with that mug. Now, that is a great idea. I do need an ELD Kool Aid glass. What should it look like? What What would my ELD Kool Aid glass look like? Like a, like a knife or a gun? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, recently, recently, uh, on, I think it was. I think it was Overdrive Online Magazine, which is, no, Ty, which is, um, it's not that kind of show, which is Landline Magazine, Overdrive Online, OOIDA. Anyways, 
they had a story with a driver um and i think he i think his quote was being on eld is like driving with a gun to his head and yet i i know i've seen it in the comments and i've seen it online some i've seen it on facebook some people are like oh i love the eld and i'm thinking why i don't i mean if you if you need to organize your life get a calendar you don't get a calendar that yells at you, do you? It's Tuesday! What are you doing, you idiot? <laughs> you <know>? Stop! Stop! <laughs> I mean, I don't know, man. I don't get it. Um, let's see. Oh, wait, wait. We got... Okay, so Patrick says, Oh my goodness, man. I've learned so much. Carl Hanger on Jay's Live Tuesday Night Show. And all of his videos are very important if you're a Carl. Well, thank you, Patrick. I appreciate that. I mean, and that, that really is the goal... Um, and what's happening now is that we've, we're moving beyond just, it, it started with me as dispatching, right? And then it moved into more of car hauling. Then we got into auto transport brokers, car shipping customers. Now we got lead generators and now we got service providers. And I mean, the blimp has taken off. Ah, okay. What's he watching, honey? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Manny Fresh says, hey, Jay, I have a dually and a three-car wedge looking for business. Could you point me in the right direction? Manny Fresh is, dude, Manny, so here's what you do. Go to ctsbusinesscoaching.com. That's CTS Car Transport Services, ctsbusinesscoaching.com. There's a form. Put a few, put any information in you want to. All we need is an email address so we can get back to you. Phone number helps, first name, and we will call you. We'll set up a time. Actually, Ty will be the one to give you a call. Man, that'd be great. So let's do that. Um, let's see here. Now, oh, by the way. Um, oh, cool. Ty sent me an email. And what I'm going to do now is... Let me make sure that uh, Draw Shea got the uh, invite. He got the test earlier. So let's just, uh, but you know what? This uh, online Zoom meeting stuff, right? You have to get used to it sometimes. I've missed webinars because I wasn't paying attention to my calendar. But you know what? You know, a lot of webinars, when you miss them, you're like, ah, I missed it. You know, <laughs> right? Who does that? Who misses webinars and doesn't sweat it? Like, ah, ah I, missed an <laughs> I missed another webinar. It's not like, you know, you didn't show up to, like, pick up your girlfriend. It's, you know, it's a webinar. Whatever. But uh, I did see there's another Keep Trucking webinar, um, Wednesday, December 12th. But it's about safety. You know, that's the thing, man. Safety webinars, they they really do need, they need to jazz it up. They need, I think they need some auto transport intel. Uh, I've done safety webinars, and I'll do it again, but it is a, uh, it's tough. You gotta, you gotta, you really need the Starbucks double shot for that. Okay, Ryan says, what's up, Jay, here for another show? Oh, cool, man. Thanks again for coming back in. I appreciate it. Breakfast rocks. It's the most important meal of the day. You know, I saw in Shark Tank. You watch, You guys watch Shark Tank? Love that show. Um, there was, uh, just saw on a recent Shark Tank, an oatmeal for any time. And it's got all kinds of, well, more than just butter and sugar. This is the oatmeal of all oatmeals and it's got everything mean, they've got all kinds of flavors and it's all new york city and anyways look for it what's he talking about honey you know i love grits <laughs> honey get me my grits and turn off the tv um it makes you want to spike the kool-aid right yeah it does actually but you know hey i'm human depends on where grits are made seems like yeah what what, what are grits Hominy? It comes from corn, doesn't it? I think they they put a bunch of corn in a warehouse and fill it with dynamite and blow it to grits. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what it is. Uh, let's see. You need lots of butter and sugar, and then you dip your toast in it. So not just butter and sugar, but also toast. Basically, all other foods to turn this into some kind of consumable Oh, that's crazy. You Take that. Should, <laughs> you put one of those mobile service trucks at the repo yard? Exactly. Oh, that's it. That's how, that's how you get car haulers to show up for their appointments. 
is have the have the roach coach of grits, the grits coach. That's it. Nailed it. We got it, man. We got it. We ought to introduce that at the round table tonight. Yeah, the grits coach. The grits coach. <laughs> That is awesome, man. I love a I love the grits coach. Uh, let's see here. So oh, Grant is in Somerville, South Carolina. I don't know where that is without pulling up my map. Um, oh, how do you get your Somerville. Well, Somerville. Your right, exactly. I tell I tell them we have grits. <laughs> I didn't get the email. Oh, you didn't get the email? Oh, no. Well, Ziggy, so here's the deal. You know what? And Duran Shea might miss his live testimonial, and that's okay. We could do it next week. I, I know that he actually he had something on his schedule, and that's okay. Um, you know, that's fine. We'll do it next week. We'll get we got ten more minutes, and then we're gonna start up the round table. So let's see what happens. So Ziggy, do me a favor, hang on for about ten more minutes, and then I'll get you that email. Um, that goes for Ziggy, Anthony, and Dave. So we are gonna have quite a round table. Uh, Grant is dispatching himself. Well, that's the thing, Grit. Uh, Grit. <laughs> Grit. <laughs> so, that's, so that's the thing, man, is that dispatching yourself is actually good because then when you get a dispatcher, you're like, oh, thank you, dispatcher. Because dispatching, it is, it's hard, man. It's really hard uh miguel hates it yeah man ah oh, golly dude i just i can't say enough about how much dispatching has uh i don't know i don't know man it's like it's like serving in a in a miniature war in your mind and within a nightmare it's a it's a war within a nightmare wrapped inside of a a grit a calendar that yells is <laughs> right a calendar that yeah <laughs> <laughs> Ziggy says a calendar that yells is called a wipe. Now that's that is funny. It's funny, but you know, but you, show, but, you, but you know, you're dead, man. Now you're dead. Um, dead meat, dead meat. Uh, smash the like button. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you so much. Listen, guys, if you haven't hit the like button, please do so. You know, it helps my YouTube rankings, which helps my Google rankings, which helps helps my global rankings, my universal. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. That was crazy. Um, Car Hauler 38 ELD. Uh, me, not you, Ty. That's it's usually me. I, you know, I'm I'm still in that blimp, thinking about me hanging onto a blimp. I got that in my I have that in my mind. Um, oh yeah, so Car Hauler 38 doesn't like ELD. I would think most people don't like ELD. You know, so uh, Silvermint is back again, looking for Intel. That's awesome. Now Silvermint is a broker, right? I like that. I like seeing brokers in here. I think brokers really help contribute to the ecosystem. Hey, it's Christmas. That's awesome. Nice tree, dude. That's great. Oh yeah, that is. That's nice, man. Very nice. Man, I got I got repo carling on my mind. I got you know what I got for Christmas? I got a repo <laughs> hammer. <laughs> and some ELD Kool-Aid. And an ELD egg timer. You know what? This is a great stocking stuffer, by the way. <laughs> no right? Kidding. ELD egg timer. That's gonna it works for grits. That's too. gonna fit right in the stocking. That's right. If you now, if you really love her, you'll fill her stocking with grits. Uh, let's see. Okay, you hate it, but okay. Bojangles grits are the bomb. I've never heard of that. Bojangles. Is that a restaurant or is that a brand that you can buy? I don't know. I'm not. I'm not familiar. But but uh, you know what? I need a good grit recommendation. So remember that tie, Bojangles. All right. Hey Ryan Chavez, I never heard back from you. Oh, it's Evil Motorsports. That's cool. Blow it to grits. <laughs> grits grits equals mix mix. Ooh. Now that's a great idea. You got to get on the grits grits. Oh man, I like this idea. Well, I don't know. I don't know what's application yet, but I definitely like the grits grits. Good call, Mark. Yes, I sent the email as instructed. We are brand new to car hauling. I'm here for all the information. Oh, check it out. Hey, Ty, I'm going to forward you Thais and um, do me a favor. You, If you can add him to the CRM when you get a chance. I just emailed you Thais. That's the way it works, man. Right, because we know, listen, that's what's cool. Ty, we're here now. 
right? Is that, uh, I'll go ahead and do this. There we go. Is that, um, Ty, you, how, 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 how much time have you spent on the road driving and loading, yeah. right? Picking, driving, loading, unloading, talking to customers. How many years? 20. 20 years. That's crazy. That's so long. I know, I know, listen, I know there's, listen, I, what I mean is, I don't mean like cuckoo. I mean, that's, that's, cool. that's hard to conceive. I mean, but it, and, and we've got folks in here watching that are also, you know, multi-decade car hauling veterans. And it's hard to grasp, isn't it? Very. The amount of cars, the amount of road, the amount of locations, the customers, the problems. Oh, the trucks that catch on fire. The trucks that catch on fire. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. You know what? And I, I actually personally, I know several guys whose trucks have caught on fire. <laughs> me too yeah i know oh man we'll have to do a show Ooh. about it yeah you know someday. exactly exactly um here i'll tell you what let's do this um oh here i'll get rid of i'll pull that out oh not that can't see anything oh that oh there's cts hey there's cts business coaching on the screen let's do this wait let's do let's do Okay, unlock that. Let's do that. Let's talk about CTS for a minute since we're... Um, oh, actually, you know what? Let's do it this way. Check this out. Let's do... I'm going to share the screen. Let's talk about CTS. We're waiting for him to come in. If if Drache doesn't make it, we'll reschedule him for next week. Okay? And um, no harm, no foul. And let's go ahead and talk about CTS. Um, and like Ty... You know, we got Ty Reese... Can, hey, can you see the screen, Ty? Yes, sir. All right, cool. Um, and so, CTS, Car Transport Services, Transport Business Coaching, what happened is um, I probably about, I know I've told you this information, Ty. We've talked about, you know, how this all got started. And really, CTS is me and you. You and I started CTS, but before CTS existed, I was getting people asking me questions through Auto Transport Intel, and they and they really, I mean, they needed help with their business, and it was a little overwhelming for me to just handle that myself with everything else I was doing. And we were already friends. We we've had coffee several times, had some great times having coffee and brainstorming, and then CTS was born, and that was only two or three months ago. Yeah. It's about right. It's pretty new. <clears throat> but new. but we move fast because you have to. You have to strike while the iron is hot. Yeah. And for sure. which is why I mean as far as the leads go, I we never know when we're going to hear from another car hauler. It's day, it's night and um time is of the essence. Actually, I've got a guy sitting in um I think he commented on my blog on my blog site. And I need to get him into the, uh, we'll do that tomorrow. I'll send him over tomorrow. Um, but basically, and so that's why I put this post together that if, you know, if, if you hear, if you're hearing transport business coaching and you're thinking, you know, A, all right, how are these guys going to help me? B, what are they going to tell me? I don't already know. Or C, I, I don't need it. I got central dispatch. I had got it all figured out. Um, I love one of the things I like to I put together this blog post kind of, you know, give you some things to think about. But I jumped to the end here because you said this, Ty. You said this. We were on the phone, and you said, you said, if you think this is a waste of time or too expensive, or do you think you can actually spend an entire hour with us on the phone without coming up with even half of a good idea, then there is no charge. And so it's on our it's on our website. It is true, and that's what's great. Draw Shea fits into this. He thought maybe. Maybe this is a waste of time. I don't know. We spent, I think we spent a half hour on the phone with him. We still gave him some coaching. And apparently, he sends me, well, he, he sent me an email. It was about a week ago. And he said, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. 
Something you and Ty told me. I tried, and it's actually working. I was like, <laughs> really? Oh, That's so I mean, awesome. That smile. <laughs> I mean, wow, man. I was wow. like, that is so... And I'm like, okay, don't tell me anything else. You got to come on the show. You got to tell me. Um, and again, I know he, he has something on his schedule, so... I don't think he's going to make it into the show tonight. Let me check my email again. But it, it is amazing um, that... Um, oh, check this out. No way. Uh, Emmanuel. Emmanuel set up, just set up a new deal on his own. He went through the website. He actually he used the form. So here's the form. And um, you just... We don't need much. I get it. We get it. There's, you know, you don't want to fill out. Don't you hate it when you're, when you have a form and you, you're like, okay, what's your first name, last name, social security number, credit card, address, firstborn, <laughs> favorite color. No, I don't want all that. Just put what you want. What I do need is a first name and an email address. Okay. That's what, that's all I need. First name and email address. Phone number is really helpful because as we have found, it's a bummer when we don't have the phone number. Um, so phone number, email, first name, and, and if you fill this information out, you know, let us know if you have a CDL or your own authority, that's helpful. If you've already got equipment, that's actually really helpful because as we've learned, you know, it, it could be better to not already have equipment. We talked to a guy last week that, uh, he didn't have anything yet. And that was a good thing. <laughs> that's <really good. laughs> because that's part of it too, is that we're not saying we're not here to tell everybody you're you, you should be a car hauler. <laughs> we're not. We're we're you know, the guys. I want to tell, I want to say something. Yeah, that, yeah. As you're talking about, I was that's exactly who I was thinking of last week. I was like, you know, that one one of the things Jay and I love about this so much is that we we get to experience a little bit of everything. And so as it's growing and developing, what like we're bumping into guys that have three or four trucks or guys that have five or six trucks. And so all the way from you don't have any equipment and you just might, might be thinking about getting into it all the way to, no, I've got a fleet. I don't really need your help, but it's really cool because there's, I don't care who you are. Like Jay, I think you said earlier in your monologue there, everybody needs a good mentor. And I, I think this business, you need about, two or three <laughs> you know it it's kind of it's like uh let's say you let's say you're a fisherman you're gonna pick up on when people say fish fishing pole lure bait right and so now with cts I'm, I'm hearing the word coaching and consulting and mentor more um but what i've noticed that when people do say i've got a mentor they're really excited about it and that makes so much sense because it's a very uh, 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 fulfilling aspect of your life. In your life, you know, you've got food and recreation and, you know, significant other and religion and business. Well, if in that important circle, who, who are you, who, where are you getting your advice? Who do you talk to when you have a problem? You know, what happens if you really need, like, some serious strategy and feedback? Well, too, you know, um, or who needs to be challenged? Who needs to be held accountable to go to the next level? Or would take that next step to, do I add another truck? Is it a used truck or a new truck? How many do I, do I want it to be a $280,000 truck with an 80-foot length and truck ready you know i mean or do i need another three car wedge and that's All important that's what i love about our our we are we have we have kind of a yin yang is that ty when we start talking about equipment i mean your your mm -hmm. information is endless um and then when we talk about strategy and when when someone says load board don't get me started i mean i just you know I don't shut up, you know, so, and there, and it's, it's everybody's, not everybody, but, um, so many people's first response of what's your business strategy. The answer is, oh, well, I got central dispatch and it's fascinating. 
It's fascinating. That's why I put in here, you wouldn't open a restaurant and get your ingredients out of a dumpster. I know that's a terrible thing to say, but... <laughs> I mean... Who has grits in it, Jay? Yeah, <laughs> we got the grits out of the dumpster, honey. Oh man, you yeah. Keep... Love it. We got the sugar and butter. <laughs> yeah, we got the sugar and the butter. You know, it's funny. Um, what is? Uh, yeah, so I'll change the screen there. That's enough CTS on screen. Uh, Keith says. Keith is saying, "Honey, are they talking about breakfast on the Car Holland Show?" That is hilarious. Um, Miguel says he's in Georgia right now after being stuck for two weeks. Truck and trailer broke down. Ooh, you know that one, right? Everybody knows that one. Two weeks stuck in Georgia. That sounds like a country song. I've been Ooh. stuck in Georgia for two weeks because my truck and trailer broke down. Dude, give, somebody hit the drum machine. This is good. Um, so, Jay, I know you talk about blogging and getting together with people in the chatting. I just bought an RV today. Oh, barbecuing. Uh, barbecuing and blogging are very different. Um, I just bought an RV today. I'm so down for some barbecue and trucking info. What do you say? I need some tips so bad. I hate dispatching. Wow. Send me an e send me an email, Beatrice. Um, and um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what we can do. But yeah, send me an email. Let, let's talk. Um, okay, Ziggy is back. Autotransportintel at gmail.com, please. Uh, let's see. Ziggy's back. David wants us to kiss his grits. Kiss my who loves Alice, huh? Who 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 or who doesn't love Alice, right? Everybody, right? And but you can't. Does anybody watch that show now? Can you even? Can you even watch Alice? I bet you can on Netflix. Um, so let's see here. Oh, you can see my mix board. That's my that's my mix board down there. Um, what else? Let's see here. Hey, brother. Sorry, I'm late. Oh, Jeff from Faith and Freedom is here. You see that? Hey, what's up, Jeff? Welcome to the show. That's awesome. Um, Grant sucks snow, good loads in southeast going up north. Yeah. Well, do this. As a dispatcher, I would say this: if you're staring at the load board and you can't find a good load headed back home, then open up, look at like, do several searches. Here's one: look a hundred hundred miles around your city to any state you could possibly hit on the way home. Maybe you do like frog hops all the way home. That's an option. Or do the reverse. Do 100 miles around the city you're trying to get to uh, as the destination and pick up in all the states near you. So you've got two opposing funnel cone searches happening. Okay? And that way, like think of like a flashlight. Let's say you were let's say you were looking for something in the dark and you can't see it with just one flashlight. Get another flashlight with a reverse beam and that's how you're going to find the loads in the dark. That's those are things that I've done. So hopefully that that works for you. You can get home and maybe not fill the trailer with good loads, but those are the things you do to get loaded cuz you're fighting ELD. Maybe that's why I hate ELD cuz of dispatching. That makes sense, right? Because I don't need another constraint when I'm dispatching. God knows I don't need another constraint. <laughs> oh, let's see. Brokers holding on to low, giving out the cheap loads. Well, yeah, I know. That's exactly how it feels. Um, and uh, I try to use this channel to learn and to uh, break out of the box of distraught. Ooh, the box of distraught. Now selling on Amazon. Get the box of distraught. Send it to somebody you don't like. Have you purchased the box of distraught for your enemy? Don't miss out. The box of distraught. <laughs> that's, a, that's why I have a show by myself. Just talking into a camera. Yeah. Okay, it must be lonely. It's new, yes, but it's well worth it, y'all. Sign up with Jay and Ty if you need help. Trust me, it'll be well worth it. Thank you, Jeff. Now, there's your testimonial. That's awesome. Ty is a deep bucket of brain stuffings. <laughs> that's, that's what Jeff says. He calls you a deep bucket of brain stuffings. I've heard worse. I've been called I that. I, yeah, man, he, he is. Why don't you mm -hmm. say, say something about Jeff right now? When's the last time you talked to him? What's going on? 
Jeff and I probably talk at least once a day. Wow. And just the stories this guy has of what's what's happening, the coaching and how thankful he is and to see to see it. I mean, he is seeing what we're saying to him. He's seeing it live and it's just wow. It's it's really cool. You know, um you know what is cool about that is that um we say, I'm, I'll tell you what, here's what I'll do this again. I'm going to plug, I'm going to plug our site again because that happened. I want to say this, is that we say that your business is all about relationships. And that's why our CTS, Transport Business Coaching, is all about a relationship with you. And what you just said, it's no joke. Like, we're really really serious about creating a meaningful coaching relationship with you because if we're not able to do that then there's no need to continue coaching with cts and that's fine that's really it's okay keep watching the show maybe you come back maybe you go somewhere else it's no hard feelings we care about this business and that's why we coach all right man awesome dude awesome that's great jeff thank you so much for saying that um what else and there is a hotline there you can actually call ty you won't find my number up there because man my i'm i'm all, i'm just happy my voicemail light's not blinking uh let's see oh J ty and jay will challenge you oh do you still love me jay i ain't forgot you oh <laughs> yes jeff yes thank you man i still love you brother uh better to have no equipment than the wrong equipment that's a really good point. Car Hauler 38 says, better to have no equipment than the wrong equipment. Amen. Gosh, and how many people have we talked to with, like, what, there was that one guy, he just bought a brand new dually. And I could hear, I know when we were talking to him, you were like, yes. oh, man. <laughs> like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah. So before you buy any equipment, Call us, man. We would rather talk to you and give you a third of an idea than to have you buy a brand new truck without any business strategy. Um, mm. All right, we're gonna and we're. I'll tell you what, we're gonna go. We're gonna go here in a sec. I'm gonna let you go in a second, Ty, and then we're gonna start up the uh, repo car hauling. Uh, uh, in fact, I'll tell you what. Here's what I'm gonna do. Ty, why don't you uh, give us some parting words of of, of wisdom? And then I'm going to um, start the repo car hauling invite while I finish those chats. All right. Um, Jay really is uh, the wisdom here. <clears throat> He's uh, put together an incredible show that's doing a lot of incredible things and helping people that we really care about. So ATI, good job. Thank Jay. you. Thank you. Super proud of you. And keep, keep doing what you're doing, man. It's good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, man. You know what? I worked really hard today um, on all things auto transport Intel. And um, yeah, because I mean, actually, you know, in the last few days, we're catching up again on CTS just because I'm, I'm just overloaded with what's going on here. But, you know, as I like to say, it's a good problem to have. So, man, I just I really appreciate that. And I'm glad to have you as my partner. Yeah, it's good. Thanks, man. Yeah, man. Cool. Awesome. All right. Well, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Sounds good. All right. Peace. Thanks. Peace out. Bye. Okay. All right. Cool. So, um, awesome. All right. So, guys, it is now time. Let's get this repo car hauling uh, round table going. All right. So, let's do this. I'm going to start this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some invitations. All right. Let me go over here. And uh, let's see, where did that go? Join with computer. Ba -ba -da -ba. Okay, let me try this again. Okay. No, no. This stuff is, uh, honey, it's highly technical. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's do, all right, so we got Dave. We got uh, Ziggy, 
And we got Anthony, which is okay. All right, so here comes the uh, here comes the meeting invite. Ziggy, Anthony, and Dave. I have just emailed you the meeting invite. Um, let me know if you do not get that. I know this screen's gone kind of crazy here. And while we're doing that, let's do. Oh, there's my repo car hauling round table graphic. Okay, cool. Um, oh, and yeah, we're going to look at the, uh, let's go back to, while well, I'm waiting for those guys to check in, let's go back to the live chat. Somebody said they're really enjoying the live chat tonight. I love that. I love seeing that, uh, hearing that kind of stuff. I'm having a great time too. Um, an hour has already gone by. It goes pretty fast, doesn't it? Hey, Dave Williams is here. Hey, what's up, Dave? Welcome to the show, man. Okay, so Dave is, is uh, getting fixed up, uh, tuning in. Let's see. Haven't touched Central Dispatch in two months since talking to Ty and Jay. That is awesome. Andy's here, but he's late. Um, oh, Dave, I think we hear you now. Okay. Yeah, I did plug my... Oh, okay, cool. Oh, and here we got... Uh, oh, I think that's Anthony. Cool. Anthony's tuning in. Um, all right. And then let's see. Shout out to the company I work for. We made it on the carrier of the month for Metrogistics. Hey, hey, that is pretty cool, man. That's not easy. I've never known anybody to show up on that list. So that is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you will never find the damage list. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> hey, Anthony, can you hear us okay? I, I don't know if Anthony's here, but Ziggy is. Oh, Ziggy. Ziggy's here. Okay, Ziggy. My bad. All right, so we got... Let's get Ziggy with it. We got Ziggy. Let's get Ziggy with it. We got Ziggy. <laughs> we got Dave. And we're just waiting for Anthony to join us. Um, And I'm just reading. I'm just kind of catching up on the live chat. Um, Let's see. So, uh, Ziggy, I'm assuming you can't see the live chat where you're at. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Hey, and by the way, I don't know if you... Let's see. I'll give you guys a recap. We talked about grits. We talked about Alice, the TV show. Dave, you eat grits, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I knew it. You're in Tennessee. Everybody in Tennessee eats grits. Ziggy, do you eat grits? I did it once by, once by mistake. Right. See? Yeah. Nobody in Jersey eats grits. All grits is is ground up corn. It's ground up corn. That's what I thought. That's it. Yeah, corn's good for you. Keeps you regular. Well, that's yeah. I like I like seeing that I eat corn the next morning when I get rid of it. You can still see corn. Isn't oh. that? Isn't that? I can't oh. tell what it was. It's weird, isn't that? <laughs> now he puts it like that. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's like, it's like I was thinking maybe with some sausage. <laughs> I've eaten no, grits no, several no, times no, down no. in Nashville. Just forget I said that. Hey. Yeah, I've had grits several times down in Nashville. Right. Next time you get that way, you have to holler at me. Well, it's it's real popular. I will do that. <laughs> it's re it's really pot. Like every time I go to Cracker Barrel, I mean, I know there's grits all over the place. <laughs> On every plate. <laughs> right. Like yeah. I'm the I'm the weird one. Well, big shocker. But uh, so, anyways, yeah, we talked about grits. We talked about Alice the TV show for a second. Ah, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, well, thank you. And we talked about oh, and then I had Ty on. We talked about CTS Transport Business Coaching. Uh, we talked. Better hit my mute. We're we gonna. We talked about the load boards. Ah, that's cool. Uh, let's see. Okay, Jeff. Jeff's gonna be in touch. Uh, Andy's late to the show. Andy's always late. I knew y'all get a laugh out of that one. Yeah, we do. Uh, oh, Dominic Satchel's with us. Hey, I haven't seen you in a while, Dominic. Thanks for showing up, man. Uh, oh, yeah. Let's see. Oh, Yance is with us. Hey, what's up, Yance? Yeah, I owe you an email, Yance. I will get that out to you. I've been playing catch up on some stuff. And right now we're just... Uh, I'll tell you what. Well, 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 before Anthony gets here, um, the purpose of this evening, of this meeting, is we're going to talk about repo car hauling and what it means to you. Dave, why don't you yeah. why don't you kick us off 
right, I'm, I got the I got the auto transport Intel repo hammer. Dave, why do I have an auto transport Intel repo hammer? Because this is too big. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we got to get a label on that thing. So yeah, I, I, it's a it's a touchy subject, but I think the best way to I think the best way to jump into this conversation is just to go ahead and dive right in. Dave, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. It is frustrating. It's frustrating. It is. Why is and it? Then, and then the information is always wrong. Ah, which makes it more frustrating. Okay, and who? <laughs> and, and where did we get the information? I'm not quite sure of that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, that's that right. Be your department. Right. Because I'm the dispatcher. <laughs> All right. All right. So let's. So I'm a dispatcher, and Dave, your driver, and Ziggy is also an owner. Dave, let me say it this way. Dave, you're a driver and owner. Ziggy is also an owner but works in repo. And mm. Anthony, who's going to be joining us, he owns a repo lot. So we're, we're all coming at this from a, a slightly different angle, which is why I, I know in Anthony's world, he's he is the opposite problem that we have. You know, you know, you know what? Yeah, he's the guy that you're waiting on when you're trying to pick your car up. Y yeah, you know what bugs him? <laughs> you know what bugs him? You called him an hour ago, and it's 20 minutes after the time you're supposed to have been there, and you're still waiting on him. Right, well, right, well, hey, uh, uh, we got, well, the thing is that, as he would say, the problem is car haulers. Right? I don't know. Yeah. I guess it could be with some, but if I tell you something, I mean it. Well, I know, but you know what? That's the problem. There's a lot of car haulers that aren't, you know, aren't doing efficient. It. Yeah, yeah, are efficient. Yeah. That's a good. Yeah, that's a good way to think of it. They're not efficient, um, and they're not they're not following through properly. They're not calling. Here, Ziggy, you take over. Ziggy, what are car haulers not doing right? No. On the repo yard for 30 years and now transporting for the last 20, a lot of things are misunderstood by both parties. The repo agents don't get paid to sit there and wait on the transporters. The repo agents are frustrated showing up with people showing up without the proper equipment to load the cars. A lot of times the repos are non-runners for whatever reason, whether it be because they have no keys or whether it be because they're just junk and the better send it back to the bank because it doesn't matter what it is. If they don't show up with the right equipment, they can't move the car there for wasting repo agents time as well as our office and or security staff. So when I started my business, my business plan was based on moving just repos. And since we've morphed into doing much, much more, obviously, but um, moving the repos, you have to have the right equipment. If you show up with a wedge trailer, a stinger, a high mount without a winch on it, how do you get that car on? Well, how do you get and a lot of exactly, exactly. Back in the day when Remarketing Solutions was owned by Mannheim, we tackled this problem, and that's legitimately why I started my transport company. Mannheim required every single repossessor to be open a minimum of five hours a day five days a week so transporters could come in and out on a fair basis. <laughs> After remarketing was sold, all of that went to the wayside. So now we have repo yards that are open literally. I deal with repo yards between New Jersey, Connecticut, New York that are open, some open two hours a week for transporters. And they won't answer the phone besides those two hours a week, but they require 24 hours notice. So if you get the work order on Tuesday and they're open on Wednesday, yeah. they won't answer the phone till Wednesday. Therefore, your closest appointment is a week out. Right. right. So, um, that's right. So <laughs> what, how does a repo lot respond to that? If I say that, because I've said it and thought it, what does a repo lot say about that? They don't fucking care. You don't pay their bills. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Oh, man. If you want the truth, if you want the truth, that's what they say. The repo yards used to get paid for repossessing the car, storing the car, inventorying the car, making keys, transporting the car, what have you. 
Now the forwarders, the forwarders in the repo world are like brokers are in the transport world. Um, the forwarders go out and sell a product and a service at a flat rate. And then they find the cheapest in the area to do it a lot of times. That business model is starting to fall by the wayside again. And recently, there's a couple companies that are going out and purchasing a lot of the larger repo companies around the country. And that, that I literally got, I literally was made aware of that in the last few days. And there has to be a level of service, but nobody talks. There are seven different trade organizations in the repossession industry. In the transportation industry, there's two for car haulers specific. Nobody's working together. The trade organizations yeah. of the repo industry all argue, so they can't set a common agreement of what should be what. I agree. Something about repo lots is they're not very understanding. They're not very user friendly either. Now, this may not be your repo lot particularly, but almost every oh, I was an asshole. I go to, <laughs> like I just got out of high school. Like, like right. you truck that'll pull this car. I'm like, why don't you just shut up and get the car? And drivers don't get paid to wait either. And I, every nope. repo lot, I've been to some repo lots and there's nobody ever showed up. But yet I raced all the way there to be sure I got there before they closed. And they wasn't there in the first place. They were like, oh, it's sitting A lot the of them are on a lot of them are unmanned lots, which they didn't used to allow, but now with the rates, my average repossession was between six and seven hundred dollars. The average repossession rate nowadays is two fifty to three hundred. So the bottom Good fell way. out with the forwarders doing this. But they can tell you that when you call your hour out, they can oh don't hurry because it's an open lot. But yet I rush all the way through Louisville with rush hour in a 65 foot truck and trailer to go down a one lane road with no turnaround to get a car and nobody's there in the first place. <laughs> and I well, called my, my office staff. I called him and he called me and all the while I'm sitting there not getting paid. My EOD is counting down and I can see the damn car sitting there. I'm like, well, I'll just get the damn thing and go. And that's how it ended up being is go ahead and get it. I'm like, well, why didn't you tell me that two hours ago when I called you? And so information right. goes both ways because we don't get paid to wait either. And, uh, yeah, and then uh, we designed a sheet where our girls actually, when they call a repo lot, we haven't dealt with it. We're not familiar with their process, their facility, blah, 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 blah. We, we have a sheet that we fill out. What are their hours? What are their days? What are their requirements? Do they require a 24-hour advance notice, an hour out? Is it a man lot? Is it not? Is it accessible by the Stinger trucks? Is it accessible by only the four cars? And those are the things we need to know. And yeah. that's something we've developed over doing this for 20 years and also knowing the inside part of the repossession industry. Those are good points. And I'm, I'm picking them up as I go along. <laughs> you know, I, I like... I, I... Well, you can get my number from Anthony. He's got it. You can get my number from Jay. He's got it. Yeah. But long story short, I'll talk to anybody happily on it because you'll find out that a lot of times we call repo yards, oh, yeah, it has keys and runs. You get there, the thing has a front end that's in the ass end of the car. God, I know. hasn't dude. driven in three years. And they, they don't know because the girl behind the desk doesn't know. That happens all the time too. Don't that, care either. that is a huge problem of, it, it, and that's that. That's why I put repo with like Copart and IAA because it seems like nobody knew that the fender was laying on the ground. They knew they wanted the driver to jam it in the car and make sure he got it, but nobody knew how bad it was. It's crazy. I got a what repo you're thinking, guys. Road and. Uh, they got a car in Harrisburg, Illinois, that's paying five hundred dollars. They need to go to Plainfield, Indiana. Somebody wants it. United Road. They called and offered me five hundred to move it, and I I don't feel like driving to Illinois, but it's a pretty good load, two hundred fifty mile load. So it's paying uh, two dollars a mile. Well, yeah, yeah, but if you don't know if you can get it on your truck, it it really does you no good. <laughs> right. But the problem well, is, we're also get. trying to fix. We're also trying to fix the communication issues of repossession companies, which many are 
and and I have nothing but respect for repoisons. A lot of them are not college educated. They are guys with balls that you would love to have at your back if you were in a bar brawl, but they don't have yeah. business process and procedure established like bigger companies. It, and nobody's taken them the time to good. teach them that. And a lot of them, they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. The older repossessors are, why do I have to learn something to help you? Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> it occurred to me that it's the volume of the repos that brought in the freight, freight forwarders, right? Because the banks were overwhelmed with repos. No. No, is that that's not right? Absolutely not. The primary okay. forwarders were uh, Remarketing Solutions and PAR. PAR is owned by Car Automotive Group, which is Adessa. Remarketing Solutions was owned by Mannheim Automotive, which is Mannheim Auto Options. They wanted to feed their machine. And they thought if they repossessed them and had them within their network already, they would then get to put them through their sales. So they sold one-stop shopping. We will manage your repossession process. We will transport the car to auction. We will remarket it. In the end, you'll get a check. And that's it. Ease of use. So now they went in, and if the average repossession fee per se was $450. Well, they go to Toyota Motor Credit, per se, and this is all examples. These are not exact numbers. I have to put that disclaimer out there. <laughs> they would agree to repossess everything for that same average nationwide. Well, the cost of operation in Syracuse, New York, is different than New York City. And it's different than Nashville, in Florida, in California, in South Dakota. We all have different markets. Right. And our cost of living, our insurance... Our real estate, our taxes all differ. So they sold something that really couldn't be done. Now the repossession fee may have been 450. That's with the bank assigning it, the bank doing all the legwork and everything else. Now they have to manage that process. So off that 450, they had to take out remarketing solution or PARS expenses to do that. So then all of a sudden, wait a minute, the, the corporations come in and say, well, we want to make money because we're doing all this. So it all comes off that 450. Now what's left for the repo agent? That's my question. Something greatly watered down. It is okay. <laughs> that's my question. Is that okay? What? Why did the marketing? Why did the remarketing companies rise in power? If the volume wasn't there, and the money is getting split up even further, you said it was ease of transaction. Is that right? Ease of transaction and the. The two primary auctions that started the bigger forwarding companies, and there were smaller ones prior to that, which just literally were a broker type situation. They now wanted to feed the auction, the vehicles. The auctions make money auctioning vehicles. Now, if they repossess them and manage the whole process, they assume that all those cars will go through their auctions. Which they do. I mean, don't, don't most of them go through the auctions, most of the repo cars? A lot of them do go through the auctions, but literally, PAR, which is owned by Odessa, still, they repossess cars that are transported to Mannheim auctions. They wanted to do it ultimately to feed their own auction, but they weren't always given that opportunity. Well, well here's my so what's the what's PAR's what's PAR remarketing's biggest problem? Do they have it? They must have problems. In this, tra- in this, everybody has problems. Exactly. So, trying what's to find, that- trying to find agents that'll work for the reduced rates and provide the level of service they want. So, is it time to re- restructure how this is all managed and organized? I mean, I realize nobody wants to wants to lose their position. You know, once you hire, once you once you have, you know, two fry guys up to three fry guys, nobody wants to lose their fry position, but are there too many fry guys? In my, in my opinion, yes, but my opinion is watered down to what? When par and remarketing existed, two different companies, then five other people got into it, and then skip tracing companies opened, opened forwarding agencies also. Everybody found out that there was great money in it, so they fought. So everybody wants to do it. 
What I'm is sure that nobody got into car hauling because they heard they would turn a large fortune into a small one. We all think <laughs> we're going to make money. That's why we pursue our chosen profession. Yeah. Well, all right. So here we are with too many. We have too many, too many fry cooks, and uh, there's not enough profit to go around. I mean, can technology help this problem? I I'll say this. When I have booked repo loads and I had to go to a website of the repo lot and I had to have this and that, I thought, well, this really sucks even more than it already sucked. However, I thought, well, maybe if, if somehow in this process the technology could help streamline all these manual requirements, I don't know, is there is there is there a way to make this better with technology or are we just hosed? There's no standard. There's no industry standard in repossession or in car hauling. Neither one has a standard minimum operating procedure. Nobody. <laughs> That's right. Mm. He's right about that. Take fifty five hundred repossessors nationwide. A lot of them are good old boys from the areas they're from, and tell them that they have to use your technology. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let me know when you're going to do that, Jay. I'll sit in their office with a bottle of booze, and I'll have a good laugh at the conversation. Well, yeah, most of them got an attitude. Most repossessors, when you go to their lot, they have an attitude. There's, they're like, well, do you know what their schedule is? Anyway. There's been six people here to get this car. Nobody can get this car. You're not going to be able to get it either. I'm like, you just point out the damn car and shut up. You don't have to be a butthead right off the bat. You could say, hi, how you doing? My name's John. What are you here yeah, for? No, I don't do, like do that. remember this, what Dave. When there were six want? other guys that have when there's six other guys that have already been there, they've had their time yeah. wasted six times. They've had to come in from repossessing making money to do something they're not paid for six times so far. You're just yeah, in that asshole in the line assholes. I, I understand I that, but that. I, I understand that. But again, you get business because other transporters roof cars. Or yeah. they don't provide good turnaround times or or or. And it's frustrating when you lose a customer based on a five dollar per car fee when you provide a higher level of service and you know you're gonna get that customer back because the guy bidding on it five dollars less won't even be around in three years. Or three months. Oh, well, that's pretty much sums it up for car hauling. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. The car hauler comes in and thinks he's going to do it for half your price. I, I laugh. I have customers that have come to me, hey, Ziggy, you're too high priced. I said, okay. They said, well, this guy's willing to do it for $50 less per car. And I say, very simple. I understand that and appreciate that. You're paying for a level of service. You're paying for a company that has equipment to get it done. You're paying for a lot of different things. People if don't you want to leave in, well, they do. I explained to them what, if you want to try that out, you are a primary customer now. When you come back, you won't be because it all matters about dollars. So if you leave, when you come back, there's no less than a 10% increase in your fees. And when you explain these things to people, car dealers, they're the easiest to explain it to. The ca average car, according to NADA, loses between 8 and $12 a day. That was taught to me by Court DeHart, who runs Digital Recognition Network that back is, in the day. That is really interesting. Say that stat again. A car loses how much? A car's value, right? Between the average car depreciates between 8 and $12 a day per NADA. So when that car is 10 days later getting to a dealer's lot to remarket it, they've lost between 80 and $120 to save 10. Well, if they would pay <laughs> more to do the thing, it wouldn't sit there so long. Right, and I, I just pulled That's... up, you know, you know, I just pulled it up. I just pulled up Ready Auto, and we've, we've seen this many times. We got Kentucky and Tennessee to the Midwest. And, I mean, you know a bunch of these are repo. Cause, oh yeah, cause, absolutely. Because they sit here week after week, or well, I don't know, day after day, or year after year. I don't know what it is, but yeah, we. Oh, here we go, Louisville to Clarksville. You know that's a repo. It's listed for forty dollars. 
You got to kiss my ass. I won't even go out of the house for $40. Much less pick up a fucking car. You got to strap it down. You got to unstrap it. You got to worry about something hitting it. They must, is that 40 yeah. or 140 40 This year. And oh, okay. So they're yeah. going to say, well, it only goes 10 miles. Okay, but it's going to take... It's gonna take all day to get the dang thing. Plus, I gotta—I yeah. I can't even pick it up today. Yeah, well, you have to remember that. Like you have to you remember would. that a lot of the numbers are figured out by spreadsheets. Right. Mannheim is a multi-billion-dollar corporation, and they look at what is the average price per mile to move a car, and they sometimes seem to be missing the point that if I go across the GW Bridge. I pay $115, so that car might be going 86 miles, but my tolls to go from southern Jersey, where I'm sitting right now in Bordentown, New Jersey, all the way up to just the other side, go to White Plains, New York. I have to go up the Jersey Turnpike to the GW. I'm going to spend almost $200 in tolls. $40. And check, this out. and check this out. Here, Matthew in the live chat says... He gets called regularly to help the repo guy. He, he he works up in Vermont, and he knows repo. And he says, not sure how he makes money after paying me. So the repo guy's tight. The car hauler's tight. Who's getting all the money? The freight forwarder? They're trying. And the, cause the repo is making good money. Because you call the broker, even though we, like you said, Ziggy, it's a spreadsheet that spat out a number. And I tell them that, listen, I mean, I don't care what your spreadsheet says. Dave, you know, Dave's going to, you know what Dave's going to say? Don't make me go tell him, Dave, that it's only $40 and some extra chicken nuggets. Come on. And, 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 and I mean, who's no, making it? No, it's grits. It's grits. If it was grits, not chicken nuggets, you'd have a deal. <laughs> say it, Dave. Like <laughs> oh, my oh, God. Oh, man. Meanwhile, the dispatcher doesn't even get a toy in his Happy Meal. Oh, it's, it, crazy. it's hard because in New York State, we were open from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Monday through Friday by appointment only, and it was simple. Okay, people say, well, I'm going to be there at 3 o'clock. Well, if I have to call in help oh, God. after hours, just so you know the expense, New York State, if I call you in and you agree to come in, I have to pay you for a minimum of four hours per New York State labor law. Oh, well, I got the office girl that has to process the paperwork. I got the lock guy that's got to give you access to a secured facility. And me, I always had armed security. So for each hour, I've got those three employees there after all expenses said and done. It's $86 an hour. It cost me times four. See, right. This is where talking to <laughs> Ziggy, talking to Ziggy and Anthony, I've learned, yeah, I, you know, I assume, we assume... <laughs> In, in car hauling, we assume that it's just, you know, we can go pick up the car and it's just somebody to ring the register. But like Ziggy's pointing out, you've got to have several people there as part of the operation. And that that, that makes it difficult. That is more difficult. Don't misunderstand. I am 100% a trans... Well, I'm 98% a transporter now as far as the car business now. And my guys are stuck to a 14-hour day. So when Dave talks about his clock is burning up, that's all we have is time. It's like life itself, but it's a 14-hour clock a day. And from the time you first start that truck and 15 minutes before for your inspection, right, Dave? You're on the clock. Yeah. You cannot stop that clock. And You don't stop that clock. And explaining that is like talking to a brick wall. <laughs> why do they want to, why do they want to be educated in your business they're having struggles in their own well right that, that, these, that, these are their rules and that's what they are they just want right. people to comply with their rules at some point I get along with several I'm sorry no I was just saying at some point if everybody's got their <laughs> fingers and their toes in the wall to stop the leaks at some point you just have not got enough fingers and toes to care about somebody else's problem that's just the there you I go I mean I know well said I have keys to several yeah, repo yards that I service now. I have keys to their lots. We've had 10 and 15 and 20 year long business relationships. Well, But it doesn't solve the issues for the lots I don't. We got a great question here. All right, here's a great question. And also, 
And Stan, uh, do me a favor, Ziggy. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna direct this to you. Part A is please describe again what a, a freight forwarder is and how that's different from a broker. And part B is why doesn't the shipper pay the repo company to move the car? Okay, well, first of all, a freight broker, I mean, a freight, what was it? Freight, what did you call it? So a freight forwarder? Did you call it a freight forwarder? What's the term? The term for the companies that act like a broker in the repossession industry is called a forwarding agent. Forwarding agent. Okay, forwarding agent. Okay. And a forwarding agent is to repo as auto broker is to car hauler. Is that right? Correct. And the forwarding agent works with the banks to manage the contracts of all the people that went out and got new cars and then skipped town. Right. The forwarder is the warehouse where all the banks send all their work and then they distribute it to the repo agents. Okay. And that's, I mean, I got to say this. As I, as I look at this problem and all these cars across the country, hey, do, could should we put out a PSA that if you can't afford a new car, you shouldn't go get one? Yeah, okay. Put us all out of work, dumbass. <laughs> right. Shut up, Jay. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I listen, I've had hard times, too, and, well, sometimes they never end. But I still, I mean, I don't go get a new car, you know? Oh, we got, oh. Jay, I've, I've heard of people buying a car in California, sign your name and drive away, you know, the no, the no money down. Yeah. They've driven them cross-country to Florida, New York the Northeast from California and bring it back to the dealer and say, I just needed to get back and I didn't have the money for a plane ride. Mm -hmm. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> okay. So people are ingenious. Yeah, no. And I, and listen, I, and I'm off my, I'm going to get off that soapbox and get on a different one, but let me ask you this. Uh, the question is, so why okay. doesn't, why doesn't the shipper, right? Why doesn't the shipper, which I guess is the bank. I think that's the question. Why? Here's the real question. Why did, why did the freight, the why did the forwarding agent get in the mix, and can a broker or slash load board like Ready Auto stop, stop with the forwarding agents? Go back to the I don't know. How do you get somebody out of this mess? Give them a good well, job. The the largest the largest financial institutions in the country, Ford, GM. Chrysler, Mercedes Credit, um, Toyota Motor Credit, Nissan. All of these people have gone to forwarders. Some still go back and forth with direct agent relationships, but most go to forwarders because now they take a – Toyota Motor Credit had a huge servicing center in Middletown, New York. When they went with a forwarder, they no longer needed the entire repossession department. And you take their – different stations throughout the country there's a thousand jobs they could eliminate a thousand desk spaces the heat the furniture the computers the networking for those thousand people it's being managed at the same cost as the repossession before therefore they're saving all that money they're increasing their profits all that money to go back to the old way they have to hire people they have to find desk space they have to put in computers okay but is that system working better or worse? According to repossessors, it's worse because without the direct relationship, you're not talking to the collector that knows that account intimately anymore. And so everything but, comes through on a computer and you'd never speak with anybody. So but now that the now that the car is ultimately losing value because the car is get, not getting transported on time because the car doesn't pay enough to either the transporter or the repo lot holder isn't it time to rejigger you would think but why is jay or ziggy or dave or anybody else when we're small little business people how are we possibly going to go into santander which knows their cost of harvesting alone down to the penny i know but isn't they, some... they understand numbers in a higher level than we ever well, will and i believe that but it isn't somebody at that company looking and going, hey, we're not making more money on this deal. No? Are they still making... You would think. Somebody's hiding some losses somewhere. This sounds like Enron. 
<laughs> I mean, right? I mean, I don't get it. I don't, if if business is not improving, because we all know how number crunchers love their spreadsheets. My goodness, and you know, if the if the line stops going up, somebody's watching, or 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 you just you know, you know, hey, let's have a good Christmas party. Let's look at that next year. I don't know. I don't. Yeah, I don't you, look, you look at how they do things secular in large companies. The the after the remarketing people say that the repossession people were getting less money for the cars, so they hear from upstairs you need to get more money for the cars. Right. Well, they never get to they never drill down or they never get enough people that can make a decision in a room to say, well, we're getting the cars twenty three days after repossession instead of two, so right. we're losing that right. two hundred and forty dollars in this. This, value right there. There's got to be a finance guy somewhere looking at that, thinking we got a problem. And by the way, there are there that the, when you talk about the forwarding agent, uh, you know, trying to improve the process because they actually, I guess, they were involved within the auction. Shoot, if you've added a forwarding agent, but you still need a broker like Ready Auto to then contact. You know, to post the car and then a car haul. You haven't improved the process. You've just added another mouth to feed. Yeah, but back in the day when this all happened, you didn't have Ready Auto. That's that's three. Ready Auto is three steps past where they were back in the day when they came up with this forwarding model. Okay. They had Mannheim Transportation. They had Transportation Solutions. They went to bed with, believe it or not, um, UPS. Oh, wow. And all these people, all these different levels were there to manage the transportation issue, which the auctions have had since their inception. So basically, there's auctions that actually purchase their own transport. So trucks. it sounds to me like we're just waiting for the spreadsheets to catch up to the reality. Right? We're, I mean, well, it, try try to get something done in a big corporation when you've got 30 guys from 30 different departments at a round table. And each one thinks that they're doing it right, mm -hmm. and the buck always gets passed to somebody else. So how does somebody actually figure this out down to layman's terms? Like, like I think I have a clue. Because some guy ran in the room with a laptop and said, "Oh my God, have you seen Auto Transport Intel?" Yeah, I assure you, they're not doing that right now. <laughs> right, nobody's <laughs> watching, dude. By the way, I started following Cox Automotive on LinkedIn today, so that ought to get interesting. Mm. That'll be one. I way. need to do that. That'll be a one-way deal. If you look at what they actually own, oh my you'll gosh. see how many steps are involved. What? I mean, no, really. Cox yeah. Automotive owns Ready Auto Transport. They own Cox everything. Automotive owns Central Dispatch. Dealer.com. The broker. Dealer Track. <laughs> the primary in broker solutions. in the country for the secondary market owns the primary load board in the country for the secondary market. Well, and that's wow. what's, I know, and that that's why it makes it so interesting. I know of several, <laughs> I know of several people working on a new load board. Several. Listen, it's been talked about several times. I know. The but... problem is, everybody wants to say, "Okay, we're not going to allow brokers." Well, why are people going to utilize the board if there's not enough freight there? Well, and I'll tell you what. And I... everybody says we put a minimum number on the freight. You can't do that legally. That's price fixing. <laughs> There's a lot of talk. There's yeah. so much talk. Now, it's funny. Now that's a good point. That is a good point. Well, and that's why I I wouldn't want to be I wouldn't want to be the architect of the new load board. But I I mean it's as we talk about repo car hauling roundtable. Um, it it makes me think of uh, when I was doing uh, and it needs to happen again is load board rehab. There's so many things to rehabilitate in automotive industry. It's intense. And yet... There's no standard operating procedure. There's no standard in any manner in the transportation industry. There's no standards to say, this is industry standard. We're all going to operate on Windows instead of Windows and Mac iOS and IS 400 Everybody's speaking a different language trying to get to the same place. Well, you know... Until we start speaking the same language, we're done. You know what the hope is, though? It's a, it's I, I find it fascinating. I, I see it as kind of a case study that you now have all of these mobile car buying apps 
for customers, car gurus, and I mean, I think Carvana fits in there, and uh, True Car. There, those companies. I don't think we in 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 general. I don't think we had heard of those companies or applications even t- say two to three years ago. This is relatively new. Well, if if you look at that out there, like uh, True Car, the software used behind the scenes to evaluate that car's value. That is produced by the largest wholesaler in the world, Robert Houndshead, Houndshead Automotive. He is, he is a freaking genius. That guy does business at a level that is, the, I don't think anybody in the country could say they have one bad word to say about it. By the way, he, wanna, is, he is the classiest man I've ever met in my life in the car business. I want to keep talking about him, but I want to let you know that in one minute, we're going to lose this meeting and I'm going to re-invite you guys through email, Okay. All right. All right, cool. So um, what's his name again? Robert Houndshead? <coughs> Houndshead. Houndshead Automotive. Oh, I think you said his name before. I have. He, he is just an incredible businessman in the auto industry. Uh, I want to I see Robert. Ah, oh, dang it. I can't type. Robert. It's Hallen. Hallen Shed. Okay. Just I just lost them, and I'm going to um, re-invite them. Um, and while we do that, we're gonna look at this. Um, oh, it's been copied to the clipboard. Cool. We're gonna look at these. Uh, this Robert Hallen Shed. Um, that's really interesting. Uh, let's see, Clarksville, and we got uh, Ziggy, and we'll just see if um, um, if uh, z- let's see, Zoom link. Uh, oh, let's see here. Wait a minute. Hang on one. Spare with me, guys. So I got I got a <laughs> I got the free Zoom meeting, and um. Can't even see my face. I got the free Zoom meeting, and uh, so I mean it's great. The, the the free version really affords a lot. This is why I sell the grits, grits, and the and the VIP and all that crazy stuff because I'm still using the free version here. Um, in fact, if anybody knows anybody at Zoom, I'd love to have them on the show. Get some uh, Zoom sponsorship. Actually, I should send them a. Uh, I should send them my my video and an email. I'm, I'm gonna work on that actually. Uh, let's see, global. Because you never know, man. You never know until you ask, right? Who found out? Who found that out uh, to the nth degree, right? You never know until you ask. It's amazing what can happen if you just simply ask. Uh, so let's see here. Okay, so oh, let's get. That stuff off the screen until these guys come back. Plus, they might be in different order. Um, let's do. Oh yeah, join with computer audio. Mic check check. Test test test. Okay, we're doing that. And Quaker would like to sponsor. <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny, man. Thank you, Mark. Um, yeah, we missed a couple in the in the chat. Let's see. We had some good questions going. That was cool. Is this something you can avoid? Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, you know how you avoid this situation is you get the auto transport Intel repo hammer. And if you see one of those in ops listed on the load board, just go ahead and put your hand right about, you know, right about there. And if you consider, if you, you, if you even think about booking that, you just, anyways, that's the repo. I just demonstrated the repo hammer there, Dave. And that's how you avoid book and repo. Um, I'm here. Okay, everybody it looks like, okay, well, we're all back. Awesome. Thank you guys for your patience and for tuning back in. I also PM'd you his name on Facebook so you have his proper oh. spelling. But if you look up his last name, Automotive Inc., you'll see who this guy is. And this guy is just absolutely the king of the used car business. Cool. I want to talk to him. I mean, yeah, he won't. 
He won't. Not not that not that he'll talk to me. What I, what I meant, I was looking. What I meant is, I want to I want to research him and know more about him. Um, and then and then when 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 we all have yachts, then we'll talk. I mean, he's already got a yacht. <laughs> yeah. We we got to catch up. Right. I don't think he gets. I, I know he loves his home on the uh, on the ocean down in Florida, but I don't think he gets into boats. I don't know. Well, that's his where home it, is just gorgeous. His, when you have that much money, you have the yacht just pull up by the beach side, and you don't really get on. You know, you just that's that's where you oh you know you that's where you put that skeet thrower, so you can shotgun yeah. right off the beach. I don't think it's called yeah. a skeet thrower. Yeah. That's how much I know about yeah, actually, pigeons. Just <laughs> great, great people. He is. It's it's funny when you meet him, you think one thing, and then it's like holy shit, this guy's just a real guy. That's awesome, man. You have to ask the right that's questions. The best. Yeah, what well, that's man, and that's really cool. I mean, and actually, that's what we all, you know, we all want to be rich, happy, and nice, right? Rich, happy, and nice. In <laughs> no, that I don't order. Like the nice part. In that order. Yeah. <laughs> can't have it all. Yeah, no, you can't. So, um, all right. So, I let's do. Let's find some more repo. I I kind of liked looking at the load board. It kind of helps. Pull up that one. Harrisburg, Illinois, to uh, Plainfield, Indiana. Okay, on yeah. United Road. Yeah. Oh, uh, United. Well, all right. Let's do this. Let's go to. Let's do it this way. Let's go to Central. And what we're gonna do is here's an idea. Let's do Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky to the Midwest, and we're just gonna do in ops because we know. I mean, almost every repo is an in op. Yeah, he said it was a, yeah, about a, about forty percent. About forty percent. All right, that's fair. I'll tell you. Yeah, honestly, I'm running about forty percent. Honestly, I'm always surprised when it's a run and drive. Um, Most of them are just dead batteries, anyway. Right. Dead, dead battery is considered a repo or a you know. Right. Well, don't we'll tell see. your customer that because then that'll turn into a whole new ball of shit. Right. Yeah. We oh like no, it was. It. Put beat to hell on the in, on the inspection. Oh, here we go. Let's see. Let's see who's moving. Who's moving the in ops? Let's see if we can find out. Oh, Peoria, is that the city where we talked? No, I talk Harrisburg. Oh, Harrisburg. Is yeah, Har it's a Plainfield, Illinois. Is Harrisburg that lady? Remember that lady? <laughs> that lady. Woo! <laughs> I'll tell no, you what, man. Let's see. You remember that lady? I don't want to say her name. Oh no! Was it Pekin? No. Oh, you're talking about Stephanie. No, I'm not. Yeah. No, 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 not her. I'm talking about the repo the lot lady. lady. Stephanie. Stephanie tries to help us get loads. Yeah, she she does. But yeah, no, I'm she talking. She gets in trouble when she don't get her cars. I talked to a repo lot lady that actually she did what Ziggy was talking about. She said, "Well, you got to call us Wednesday." to set your appointment and we're only open once a week. And I said, well, at that point, I mean, uh, I don't even know what we're doing in two weeks. Uncle Dave, don't do that. You know, I, I said, are you serious? I said to her, is this really how you operate a business? Obviously when you say that kind of thing, it's not very nice and it wasn't going to go anywhere good, but I just, what? I mean, I have no idea. We, we, we might be dead in two weeks. Hell we got, we got broker payments. We don't even know if we'll have that money. We may not even have gas in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> we damn sure ain't going to care in two weeks, that's for sure. Oh, shoot, man. I don't know, but this is, dude, this is a lot. This is a lot of in-ups. Look how many are ready auto, dude. That's a lot of ready auto. Ready auto. Ready Auto moves for a lot of the manufacturers, whether it be lease turn-ins or whether it be repo cars. They send me direct uh, connects every day, but I email them back and I say, I don't move for nothing for less than a hundred bucks. I don't care if it goes from Clarksville to Nashville or from Oak Grove to Nashville or from Nashville to Nashville. If it don't pay at least a hundred dollars, don't call me. We're seeing Ready, United Road, and then we're seeing, yeah, PRA Logistics, and RCG Logistics. PRA is another forwarding company. PRA 
is a skip trace company that got bigger and bigger and bigger into forwarding. So instead of just doing the skip trace, which is the lost vehicles nobody else can find to repo, they actually got into managing other portfolios besides just the skips. Oh, look, there's a bunch of JMN. So tell me more about skip tracing, because I'm not. I just don't even know what that is. Skip tracing. If you want, if you want to try to disappear, I chase you down. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, if you <laughs> no, want, you, that's pretty much it. I looked it up a little while ago, but a skip tracer is the man that hunts you down. And then gets the car. Okay, so I buy a car. You know, I get that 0% down, 0% financing, 0, 0, 0, 0. It's Labor Day. I mean, I've been up all night rolling eights or whatever, whatever people do. And uh, and I go get my brand new Mal... Uh, no, I screw Mal, but I want an Escalade. I get the Escalade with the whole, you know, I get the Vanilla Ice Escalade special. And I'm, man, I'm gone. I'm out of there. I'm hitting Slab City, and they're never going to find me again. Skip Tracer? Oh, yeah. Is that the Skip Tracer? Yeah, he'll find we you. We hunt you down like rabbit animals. Yeah. I you ever watch the show with dog in it? Yeah. Dog is a Skip Tracer. He's a Skip Tracer. Man, I throw my <laughs> credit cards out the window. I've got all new girlfriends. You're never going to find me. Skip Tracer? Well, dog is more Skip Tracers. If you take the top 10 information burgers in the country, doggos buddy to eight out of 10 of them. <laughs> we should have I want to be dog. We need a skip tracer round table. <laughs> oh, it's like, but so it's like private investigator stuff. Pretty much. And is it, do you hire a skip tracer in the situation where you got the vanilla ice escalate and they're off the map? Is that the deal? Well, it depends if you're paid to do it. Yeah. If you're not, Hell no. Why would you spend money for nothing? Right, but I mean that you know, the bank that, that hundred grand that hundred grand vehicle has disappeared. We haven't got any payments after that zero 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 and we're gonna hire a skip tracer and we want our car back. We're gonna sell it at the auction. Skip tracer? Well, skip tracer, but, yes. Uh, Most of the forwarding companies have skip departments within them. And okay. it, it's how they tie their hands behind their back there very counterproductive in the onset because they run a simple header report off the bureaus and they'll send you to 13 addresses because there are nobody's telling the forwarders no they're all afraid of losing the business so if you do work for a forwarder you're afraid to say oh no i'm not going to run 13 addresses and you're literally by the time you pick that car up after checking the ninth address and finding it and getting lucky you've already spent all on fuel which you're getting paid for that car and more But and so to get into skip tracing is is the is the prerequisite for skip tracing repo. No. Oh. Just if, you, if somebody dis if somebody disappears for whatever reason, if they're hiding from child support, a skip tracer will find out where they work. If your wife wants to find out who you're calling, they'll hire a skip tracer to tap your cell phone, which is illegal in the U.S. now. But that's another story. Interesting. Okay. All right. All right. So that's the skip tracer. So then, um, uh, but these, obviously we know where the car is. We know it's inoperable and, um, that's interesting. PRA. And I did not know that. And PRA is not PRA location services is their mother company name. They are, they are a forwarding agent. Yep. Interesting, because I know a billion dollar company, and they, I mean, they usually. What's the deal? How about this, Ziggy? What's the deal with? You guys know this one. You book the car on Central Dispatch. They give you a number to call. You call the number, and when you talk to that number, you're talking to a nationwide, like mailbox center. And then once you give the right information and turn your keys, then they give you another phone number, which is an actual... You're calling a forwarder who's telling you which agent has it at that so point. So that is the forwarder, huh? A lot of times. Yeah, okay. Because, and I call, I'll talk to them and I get them on the phone, but I can't actually get the repo location on the phone. And I'm thinking, so I call back the main number, I tell them what's going on, and then they do the identification. You need your thumbprint, put your arms up, and all that stuff. I go through it again, and but I can never get anywhere. 
you have to remember that a lot of the smaller repossession companies that don't have fully staffed offices, it's a guy that's out working from basically the time you go home at from work. He's knocking on doors of the neighborhood. He's checking behind the houses. He's working till daylight, and then he has to sleep sometime. And now they're being requested to go into release cars at no fee. They've taken away all the profit margin to be able to pay a staff. That's why there's so much problem. Are there also, are there too many repo agencies? Yeah. <laughs> are there, there, yeah. There's not enough qualified ones. Let's say it that way. We got about five in this town. In Nashville? No, they probably got 15 or 20. Yeah, in I was going to say, I know I about Clark 20 in Nashville. Yeah, I live oh, in you live in Clarksville? Yeah. Yeah, you got you got Mark, you got Anthony, you got Phil has an office out there. Yeah. Uh hey, Silver Mint says he read a piece, he read an article by an attorney how unlicensed forwarding company how unlicensed forwarding companies have turned the industry upside down. Absolutely. But the problem is what is considered unlicensed because is there a license in New York? Where in Florida there is, where California there is. It's every state has their own. That's why some people choose to operate like PRA Location Services was operating out of Las Vegas. You can do anything Market in Las Vegas. Solutions. Yeah, you can do anything you want as long as you don't get caught. <laughs> but no, <laughs> well, remarketing there. solutions. <laughs> remarketing solutions was down in uh, just south of. Nashville, about 15 miles. Franklin? Metroplex. 435 uh, Metroplex Drive. Yeah. The other the other side of the airport from you. I spent a lot of time down there. So, what's a, predi <clears throat> what's a prediction? I was like this. What's a prediction? I mean, is it just going to keep going this way until... I mean, I don't know. Is it just going to keep getting worse? What, the repo slash... Transport issue or the repo issue or the transport issue? Why, <laughs> well, how about how about the value of the car? At what point does somebody that owns the car, because that's what's going to have to drive any change, is that the car just keeps devaluing, we're losing this money, the cars aren't getting to auctions, so now, okay, we're not getting our product. We have an inventory problem. We have a value problem. What are we going to do? Are we going to get rid of the forwarding agent? Are we going to get rid of, I mean, are we going to go, are we going to go straight to, to car haulers and brokers? I mean, what's a prediction? Before you get to a prediction, remember this, when you take Mannheim or Odessa being as large as they are, and they're doing tens of thousands of cars a month, when you call up from and I'll use the name that everybody hates in the repossession industry, Santander. Okay, Santander controls so much of the repossession industry right now because they're the largest volume repos of banks. They have the largest volume of repossessions out of any lender from what I'm aware of. So when Santander's pissed off because the 2002 Toyota, whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter, Celica, didn't make it to auction on time because they were doing tens of thousands of cars a month. Mannheim or Dust can say, okay, how much you feel you lost? Okay, we'll eat that because they've made millions elsewhere. They put a band aid on a gunshot wound. Yeah, I'm with you. No, I hear you there. So, really, yeah, I mean, there's no real incentive to change anything because. Well, a lot of times they'll see what the, the repo agent will give them for the car. And just write it off at that point. They'll be like, well, will you give us this for it? And he says, oh, yeah, I'll give you that. And then the repo agent gives it to his car lot buddy to sell. Yep. Well, and that's why, like Stan is asking, why doesn't the shipper pay the repo company to just move the car? <laughs> they ultimately do. Ready is, Ready is technically the shipper. Right. But and why Ready car will contract... Ready will contract with repossessors if they're willing to move the cars. But the repossessors have finally gotten smart enough to say, uh, not for that money. 
Right, that's what the dispatcher and the car hauler are saying. But ultimately, but the problem is we don't have enough people working together because Ziggy may want a dollar per mile per car. Dave, because he lives in Uncle Daddyville, might want 31 cents per mile per car. And I'm not busting your balls just for fun, Dave, but in reality, the cost of living up here is far different than Clarksville. Uncle Daddyville. <laughs> You know, That's funny shit. you know what? You know my favorite grits come from Uncle Daddyville. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. We'll have to remember that. Yeah, Uncle, Uncle Daddyville. Daddyville. <laughs> and again, it's more of a ball like than anything. Is, is... I moved that car for United Road, and they wanted me to move it from Old Hickory to uh, Mannheim for fifty dollars. Well, I was going right by there. I said, well, hell, I'm going right by there. So I'll get this car. You know, I got room for it. So I got there, and they had to pay first. Well, they paid like 1200 bucks or 1300 bucks for them to store this car. They want me to move it for $50. So that pissed me off right off the bat, you know. And then it ended up not being there. It was in a different – it was in Gallatin, which Gallatin is another 35 miles north of where – Old Hickory is. So I had to drive from Old Hickory all the way to Gallatin to get a car that I was supposed to pick up on the way to Manor. That pisses me off. She didn't even know where the car was. Turns out they had two lots. One in Gallatin, one in Old Hickory. So, you know, that's that's aggravating. So I told her, I said, just forget it. I'll just go on to Manheim about my day. I wish I'd never called you in the first place. Ended up getting $150 for it because I told her, just forget it. And so she figured, well, hell, I already wrote a check for thirteen hundred bucks. What's one hundred fifty dollars? You know, that's what I'm. Scared. My opinion, you honestly, pay sixty dollars a day and hold the car, but want me to go get it for forty bucks. My opinion is honestly it has nothing to do with the brokers why the rates are were in the toilet. It's the truck owners because the brokers ready doesn't own a truck. If we could teach all the truck owners their true cost of doing business, if we could teach them what their value is and everybody stood on the same platform on those things, then we wouldn't be moving cars at those rates and nobody would. The problem is there's 38,000, according to DOT, there's 38,000 transporters nationwide. Find a list of those 38,000, just can't contact them. And they're so fed up with scams and bullshit. They don't want to hear nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And then you got your CDL problem, too. It costs a lot more yeah. to run a CDL business than it does a non-CDL business. Right. How many trucks you got, Dave? I just drive one. High mount One truck, two trucks. Bigger. One truck, how many no, cars? It's a, it's a 50-foot Wally Mo. Okay. It's a four-car car belly loader. Oh, four-car no, belly loader. Okay, four beautiful. Car. Four car, okay. Your four car, you're probably pulling with like a, at least a small single axle tractor, probably. Yeah, it's a sixty five hundred. Okay, well, it, it's better than a thirty five hundred, like some people are doing. Oh yeah, but I got <laughs> well, people with them people driving thirty five hundreds. You know, I too. get six miles to the gallon. They get fifteen miles to the gallon. I, I fully shit. understand people. People don't realize even giving you an option. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to turn this into a sales pitch, but I teach you how to save thousands of dollars a year, and people just don't do it. Yeah. Sounds like a but show. That's, that's what the problem is, though. I mean, a person pulling a three-car wedge without a CDL could move a car for fifty dollars, but a person pulling a fifty thousand dollar trailer, paying for a CDL, excise tax, if the tax. LLC, all this other shit can't. I mean, it just don't work right. out. The numbers just don't. You know, there's a guy in Syracuse, New York. You get a gallon in a 3500, you get six miles to the gallon in a 6500. There's a guy in Syracuse, New York that has a Dodge 3500. And God forbid he might hear me on that's fine. I really don't give a shit. <laughs> Monday through Friday during the day, it's got XYZ landscaping on the side of the truck. At <laughs> night, he takes those he takes those magnets off and puts ABC Auto Transport. Yeah. 
On the weekends, he's got Jays excavating, so to speak. And yeah, they're he... not paying proper insurance. It's registered to his girlfriend. The trailer's registered to his son, who's three years old. And they're not paying anything until we start vetting. Until they truly vet these vendors, I, I, I can't imagine when something bad's going to happen. It's going to finally make people say they need to vet the people doing their work to a higher standard than they do. So, one I was going to say this earlier. I'm hearing it again. I mean, it, one of the un, unfortunately one of the things I'm hearing is, and I man, I I don't want to say it, but regulation yeah yeah if you stick to the regulations it costs you a fortune well but i mean <clears throat> i mean regulating an industry which i mean well yeah but you can't regulate half the people and not regulate the other half of the people well it seems like dot sure has a lot of there regulations if it's yeah but they don't they don't enforce it they don't enforce it how is that possible they don't enforce it properly it's people what do you mean that was impossible? They only have so many DOT cops to pull over so many trucks. Generally, a lot of, a lot of states don't. Time. Yeah, they and a lot the of the states won't time. pull over a wedge because they know that the guy doesn't have the money to pay the bills. Yeah. So if he finds them $17,000, he's not going to get paid anyway. I heard they target. So pull over a truck like mine. You know, yeah. Which is a three hundred thousand dollar brand new yeah. truck. Now, who's going to be able to pay? That's really interesting because I have heard. I've heard wedges feel targeted, and and then you're saying that you know more like a, a high mount is targeted. I've heard that the that the dualies are targeted more than the semis. Everybody they, they thinks are, their they own are, niche is targeted. Right. I think I'm being targeted right now. Every, everybody thinks their own niche is being targeted. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's Connecticut sets their own rules. I travel through Connecticut. The only reason I do business in Connecticut is because nobody else wanted to. It was a free open market. Hmm. That's very interesting, man. This is uh, so uh, okay. So there. So in recap, I think what one of the one of the big takeaways. If I if I'm still here at this point in the show, which I'm proud. Thank you guys. I mean, really, we still have two thirds of the people that came in are still here or so thereabouts, and that's pretty awesome. Um, which I think speaks volumes to the amount of information that is up for grabs in the car hauling industry. Um, also speaks volumes about the quality of the guests that are on right now. I want to say this right now, Dave. I appreciate you uh, joining the show as often as you do. It's great. Um, you do a service Honor to the to show. You. Yeah. And, and Ziggy, I mean, you are a, uh, uh, your name is known. I mean, yeah, you are. People know when they hear Ziggy Keller, they know they want to listen. And, 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 and I appreciate Ziggy. I really appreciate you making the show and, and adding so much. I mean, you are a driving force in this topic. So. No, well, we're trying to make the industry a little better. And to do that, we have to work together. We can hate on the wedges if we want. We can hate on the stingers. We can hate on anything we want, but it's not helping fix the inherent problems we're all trying to fix. Yeah, no, it's not the drama, right? There's so much drama in the Facebook groups. Um, I mean, there's great information, too. You know, I, I'm on Facebook every day. I, are, are you, Ziggy? I mean, may, you may not want to answer that question. <laughs> Um, but I am on, I'm on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Right. It, it, since I started the group, there I, there's almost no relief from it. I think most I people are. I don't hate on a three car bed. I don't have no problem with so We need three car beds. Yeah, we do. But you have to understand we need, that we need all the, aspects. Uh, operate. But, and, but what we need is, I think one of the things about the three cars is, it's gotten a little out of hand. I mean, the way some folks are loading their trailers is out of control, right? And we well, and I saw a four car. I saw a four car Wally Ma on the back of a single rear wheel F three fifty, loaded with four SUVs. Right. Oh. Damn. Right. That's forty. He just forty two, forty three thousand pounds. Uh huh. Right. 
Well, the book says I can tow a 30,000 pound boat. <laughs> uh oh, Uncle Daddyville. Um, well, yeah. yeah, it 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 and that's and we're and we're seeing every day. I mean, almost every day we're seeing flipped over car haulers, and it's usually a three or four car overloaded. Like if you're yeah. if or you're with the wrong uh, equipment, even right, yeah. even a gooseneck allows a flex to the left or right so much, it, it's not the proper equipment for the job. When you, That's the same thing the right. repo agents are bitching about. When you see a flipped over car hauler in a regular intersection, you know that was waiting. He's running a ball. Like, dude. You need a two inch kingpin. Yep. It's always a fifth wheel. I'm not, sorry. It's always a gooseneck. Always. Yeah. It's because the trailer moves independently from the truck. See, when my yep. trailer rocks, my truck rocks too. It goes like this. Right. Right. Uh, my truck rocks the too. Hey, there's a good teacher. Hey, dude, we're on the phone. We don't understand up. what this means. <laughs> when that uh, that hey, be that be a good T-shirt. When my trailer rocks, my truck rocks too. Yeah, yeah. You see the truck rocking? Don't come knocking. If you see my truck <laughs> rocking, dot. So I mean, yeah. but and, and that's and then so that's why in this topic tonight. Repo car hauling roundtable. I'm going to say this. I really think that um, I it, uh, topics including forwarding agent. It's that kind of information that I think um, I think this topic could be revisited frequently, semi frequently, because I don't think that not everybody knows all of what's involved when you book a repo car. And I know over time, I've learned more and more, and Ziggy, you've helped me understand from the repo agent's point of view much better. The, I think aside from the, from the money that's being lost, it's this 24-hour appointment and all the expectations that go into that. I understand what you're saying as far as the repo lots need and I also, obviously, really understand the car haulers need. The two work against each other directly. I'm assuming technology could help that somehow. But, I mean, you can't you can't force a car hauler to make his appointment, whether he's late due to something or he just doesn't want to go. I don't know what it is. So many, I've, I've read on Facebook, and this brings me back to Facebook, I've read on Facebook so many repo agents feel like car haulers are just blowing off their appointments. What do you think about that? That's a problem. I don't think they understand logistics. Yeah, I mean, why would... If you go through if you go through downtown Nashville at the intersection of 24 and 65 there during rush hour, and you really think you're going to make what your GPS says, yeah, and half the time the people going to these repo yards are the guy that's doing it because the last guy says, fuck you, no more. <laughs> I've said that. <laughs> we we all have. There's there's repo agents I refuse to deal with. There's repo agents that refuse to deal with me. I'm nice to them. I don't want to be, but I am. And I think if you're going to repo do repo cars, that you need to, that needs to be your main line is repo cars, because it's hard to make an appointment at the dealership and then pull with the repo lot. It just what? throws everything out yeah. of whack. When you get yes. when you get to running lanes, how I did, I started strictly doing repo yards. But yeah. then I got, hey, will you do our lease turn-ins too? Yep. Will you do this too? Yep. And I just keep paying me. So that that's pay me my pricing. God bless them. Do you think that? Do you think that maybe there's a niche there? Then if you could create a relationship with the repo lot, and like yes, right? That's probably one yeah, absolutely. of absolutely okay that. You Which, need a wheel lift. Right. Get a wheel lift. Once you get the right equipment. And a two car, three car trailer, you make plenty of money. So that's it that's where yeah. the you know, <coughs> that's where this problem ultimately creates an opportunity. Right? Because usually problems do create opportunities. If repo you, is a niche. Repo is a niche. 
And I guess yeah, that's I mean, why you got five yeah. repo yards in Clarksville and two in Hopkinsville. You can make that loop back and forth to Nashville at least three times a week, making two to, you know, one fifty to three hundred dollars a car. And, and that's but where you can't run to Illinois to the dealership and do that. I don't. I don't think Brendan could join us tonight. But when I posted on Facebook earlier that we were going to do a repo car hauling roundtable, Brendan was saying that he loves repo, and he moves repo like all day. I, I was like, if that's what you do, it's good. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. thinking. If he's, if Brendan, if you're still with us, let me know. I'd love to have you on the show for a few minutes. But um, I, I think I don't think his schedule allowed him to join us either. But. Uh, Let's see. Car but look at it like this. Say if I'm going to haul three cars, let's say I'm going to haul four cars to Louisville, Kentucky from Mannheim. I go get my four cars and I get into Louisville, Kentucky. I'm four and a half hours into the job and then I call a repo lot. I said, I'm almost going to be at your place at you got a time. And then you get that to delivery and you got like five holds up. Well, there's there was your hour right there. They said, well, you said he's going to be an hour. I'm like, yeah, but Dick needed this, Tom needed that, and I'm two hours now. Well, you can't have your car. Oh my gosh, just, that's the it's thing. It's hard to do it. Oh, it's the and it's the yeah the, the enforcement. Like, listen, I, I here's one for you. I know we've missed an appointment, but there were still there were still people at the yard because somebody else was on their appointment. What do you mean you can't have the same appointment time? Yeah. What are you talking about? I mean, you're already there. Because uh, that doesn't matter. With with the privacy laws and stuff, if they're in there releasing a car to a debtor, they can't discuss anything in front of anybody else in that room, so they have to have that clear. My, my repossession yard had an area where you could only have one person in at a time. And you have a secure facility... You can't have other people in that same little room because you're discussing their private account information. A lot of them are like that. Well, and this gets into hey. that's that's where these should be higher paying vehicles if it's going to have all this rigmarole. They always were until now. Right, and then they were. Well, I don't yeah, know, because man. People think they can do the same thing. This problem has given me a headache. I think I'm going to go back to the repo hammer. Yeah, right? <laughs> I got something for you. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Exactly. I think I need a nap after this show. Yeah. You know? But I mean, if you're going to do repo, that needs to be your niche. You need to do repo and stick with it and leave the car transporters out of it. Because it's just too difficult to transport on a schedule and then stop everything to meet a repo yard schedule. It just don't work out. Right. Like that time I took that Mustang to Fort Knox to meet that soldier. Yeah. The deal was I met the soldier at the gate. We unloaded the car at the gate, and I left. Well, it didn't work out like that. I called the repo lot. I said, look, I'm going to drop at Fort Knox, and I'll be at your place. They're like, okay. And it's only like 45 miles from Fort Knox to Louisville. So <clears throat> I get to Fort Knox, and it takes me 35, 40 minutes to get through the gate. So I got through the gate, and the guy's standing there. I said, well, let's pull right over here. I'll unload it. He says, well, can you take it on to my residence? I mean, what do you say? No. I said, yeah, yeah, I can do that. So we go down this long-ass road in Fort Knox, and we get to the turn. Well, it turns out the bridge for the railroad is only 10 foot high. I can't go oh. through there. I need at least 13 foot. So I said, man, I can't. Too low, too low. So we had to turn around and drive all the way back to the gate and take another road. All that shit takes time. Mm. So then I was late to the repo lot, but turns out nobody was at the repo lot in the first place. So I really didn't have to be there at the same time. That, that's the one where nobody was there, and I'm down this one-lane road with a 65-foot truck and trailer. You ought to see me get we out have of lots, that shit. We have lots in the Northeast that are half an acre and they cost the repo yard 10000 a month just to rent. Golly. You think you're going to get That's a crazy. Stinger truck in there? Even getting a four-car in there is almost impossible because they're well, elbowed the assholes full of Louis repos. The repo lot in Louisville, Tennessee, you have to park at, a, at an industrial complex about a quarter to a half a mile away and walk back and forth <laughs> to the repo Oh, lot. yeah. There I'm was like, that. lost your 
Yeah. So I parked in the middle of the road, and a cop comes up. He says, sir, what are you doing? I said, I'm picking up four cars right here. He said, well, you can't park here. I said, well, I'm going to have to finish. I can't move my rig now, you know, because I was disconnected. The trailer was dropped in the road. My truck was up in the lot. Who's got time for the walk? Let's see, by the time you load four cars, you drive down there and then walk up half a mile, drive down and walk back a half a mile, and drive down and walk back a half a mile, and drive down and walk back a half a mile. Fuck, there ain't no way, man. You can kiss my butt. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't buy no damn $100,000 truck to walk four miles. It ain't happening. <laughs> now, you said a few cops showed up that day, right? Like, didn't they Too just. Two of them. Yeah. Two of them. <laughs> Man, it's crazy. It really yeah. is. They will arrest was, you up here for that. Really? Well, they will I was flat out that. arrest you for that. In 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 uh, in. Uh, Man, this is crazy. Can in Connecticut? Oh, in, yeah, in uh, Jersey, up in Jersey. Jersey. Jersey, New York, Connecticut, all of them. Really. Oh, yeah. Put your right in jail. Road. Hell, yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I wouldn't get along good up there. Well, you know what? No, that's, it, it's, it's a different world. And that's actually why a lot, I mean, really a lot of car haulers. I've talked to a lot of car haulers through the years. So many will not go northeast of Pennsylvania. It's the cutoff point. Yeah, it's like you go, I think, mean, honestly, I, I joke around with Tennessee being Uncle Daddyville, but we're, we're just like enter the war zone. Oh, man. Yeah, you they're cross... taking guns up there. When they don't give them up, they just shoot them. <laughs> Try that shit around here. No, I'm, I'm well aware. I had an office in uh, Spring Hill for a lot of years, but <laughs> Spring Hill, south of Nashville, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. In fact, I think United and Road has a big area there, right? Trantec, maybe too. Well, yeah, they all have they all have places down there for GM. Is that a right? Long story short, my mine was for a forwarding company that I was involved with in uh, Spring Hill. Is that a railhead area? No, there's a plant a in plant. Spring Hill. Okay, it's a plant. Okay, General Motors. I gotcha. Arcadia's. That's it. Remember that oh, yeah. that I was sending you? Oh, shoot, man. I, I've seen that. They still doing those Acadias down there? Those Acadias. There was they a send me a load every day. A few years ago. Man. Acadia, Acadia, Acadia. All the time. Yep. Wow. Wow. Well, I'll tell you what, guys. The uh, the timer here the is telling me. got hooked in was pretty good. I want to say it's the timer's got me at a minute and a half. So we're going to lose this. Uh, Send Dave my number, will you please? So, yeah, Dave. Uh, hey, Dave, remind me to give you Ziggy's number. I'm going to put you guys in touch, definitely. In fact, I'm going to, I'll, I won't do it now. Okay. I want to take up that time, but remind me. Yeah, I want to put you guys in touch, man. And uh, before I let you go, I want to thank you. Yeah. He can send me a Facebook message too. I actually posted my phone number on Serge's post earlier. All right, I got a minute. So I, Go to Surge's post. Yeah, go to Surge's post. Dave, uh, before I lose you, man, I want to thank you for joining me on the show. This was really fun. Repo, car hauling, round table. This is fun. Can you believe yeah. it? Yeah. Here we are. I love it. It's great. I had a big time. Ziggy. Good to talk to you, brother. Yeah. And Ziggy. Nice talking to you, sir. Th Ziggy, thank you so much for taking the time. I know I kept you a long time tonight, and I just, I really, really appreciate it. Not a problem, my friend. Cool, man. We're going to keep doing yeah, this. Good job, Jay. Thank you, guys. We're going to keep doing this. We're going to keep educating the auto industry and helping people when it comes to car hauling. I want to thank you guys so much, and I'm about to lose you. Don't forget to sign up for the Mats 2019. That's right. We're all going to be there. Ziggy, can you make it to Mats? End of March. Uh, very possible. Man, be awesome. Very possible. The more, the better. Yep, awesome. The end of March, everybody. End of March. Mid America Truck yeah, Show. Now. All right. So I just lost them. And uh, uh, let's see. Let's go to this. Let's do this. 
Let's do this. Okay, so I just lost, uh, I lost, our, our Zoom meeting ended, but at least I got to thank them in time. Um, but yeah, it, let's go to that. Let's look at that, guys. We are all going to go to, I can take these out now. We're all going to go to, sorry about the clickety click. Uh, we're going to go to, you want to go to M-A-T, oh, here, let's do this. Let's do, there we go. Let's do that. You want to go to truckingshow.com, all right? Go to truckingshow.com, and that's the Mid-America Trucking Show, Mats 2019. It's, Mar oh, here we go. Let's do this. Okay, March 28th through March 30th, 2019. That's next spring in Louisville, Kentucky. And this is the, I believe this is the largest trucking show in the United States. Um, there are some big ones. Gats is in Dallas, but Matt's is in Louisville. And uh, it's mostly freight. Um, it really is. I've been to the show. But there is some car hauling, and I'm going to be there. Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to go live from the show, and we've got, I mean, we've got Mike from East West Express hauling. Um, he's going to sponsor the booth that I'm going to be in. And um, we've got, uh, I know Dave's going to be there. Um, Ty from CTS, he's going to join me in the booth with Mike. And um, we're spreading the word. We want to try and get as many car haulers up there as we can. Make some videos, go live, have some fun. It is a pretty fun show. And really, the amount of information available at this show is off the hook if you are if there's something you need for your truck and trailer man they have got it you're gonna see stuff it's awesome it really it's it's like uh you know it's like the mall of america for people that love malls or, or, or whatever it is really an amazing show so i hope you'll join us at the show i want to thank you guys for tuning in obviously for another great show um I, I feel it went really well. I'm sorry we missed Anthony tonight, that he wasn't able to join us. We also missed um, uh, Drache earlier. Hopefully he can join us next week. Sometimes that happens. There are scheduling conflicts, no big deal. But listen, if you want to be on the show, if you've got a topic you want to talk about, if you want to do an interview, if you've got a company, a product, or a service, if you want to educate people on something, um, or if you just want to speak your mind, listen, if you're a car shipper and you've had trouble with a car hauler or you want to thank somebody or you need information, you're a new car hauler and you want to um, get information, maybe if you're an auto lead generator and you've got a, a website, you know, and people are looking for car shipping and you want to talk more about what's going on in your world, maybe, maybe not. If you're a broker and you want to talk about your brokering company or educate us all on something that's bothering you, maybe you've got a pet peeve that you want to share, whatever it is, you are invited to join the show. This is Auto Transport Intel. It's every Tuesday night, all right? Every Tuesday night, 8 o'clock Central, 9 o'clock Eastern. And as, we, as we've as we been seeing every week, we've got at least another new person, and it may be only one, I don't have the largest following yet, but it is growing, and it is consistent, and I can tell you on the YouTube numbers, um, my watch numbers have been going up. Uh, my subscribers are going up. The channel is growing. It's not going away. I'm going to be here every single Tuesday night. In fact, this uh, Christmas is on a Tuesday, so I guess I'm doing a Christmas show. New Year's Day is on a Tuesday, so I guess I'm doing a New Year's Day show. Um, and in January, I'm going to be live in West Springfield, Massachusetts, hanging out with Serge the Car Hauler. Hey, if you want to do a live show remote, let me know. Let's, let's put it together. So there's a lot of opportunity here. You guys know that recently I, I put together a new video. I've got this new auto transport Intel video talking about car shipping, social media, and referral marketing. Let me help you grow your business. Um, and if, you know, if you've got a service business, let's get together. If you've got insurance, uh, equipment, financial lending, um, maybe you got uh, some equipment that you supply and manufacture, it doesn't matter what it is. We should talk about it 
Uh, because if you're involved in auto transport, we're going to run into each other eventually. So we may as well talk about it now. But you know what? That's cool. We can wait till later. ELD eggnog. That is a great idea. I would love to do ELD eggnog. Um, I mean, it won't get you there on time, but it will get you there. <laughs> ELD eggnog. ELD grits. So listen, guys, seriously, in the live chat, it means so much to have you join me and to participate. Um, and I, I just, I love it so much. So here's the, uh, here's the, uh, the final piece. I'm going to say, whether you're a car shipping customer, auto transport broker, car hauling dispatcher, vehicle shipping company, or car carrier service provider, Auto Transport Intel is the number one recommended YouTube video channel for you. Um, if you need auto transport business coaching, if you want to talk about dispatcher training, I saw an email from uh, DP Dispatch and he knew somebody that wanted to get into dispatching, send them my way. Uh, if you need a referral for an honest transport broker, you can email me, autotransportintel at gmail.com. Please remember to like, share, subscribe, comment on my YouTube on my Facebook, you know, there's many social media. You know that after the show, I'm going to do an Instagram video. Like, here in a few minutes, when the show is over, I'm going to do an Instagram video, post that on Instagram. I'm very active now on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. I do do a little bit of Twitter, but, you know, um, it doesn't seem to be the most popular social media platform right now. But my LinkedIn presence is growing as well. So, listen, find me autotransportintel at gmail.com. Let me know what I can do for you. Let's connect. Let's communicate. Let's have you on the show. I'm about to start up the car hauler. I want to thank you guys so much again. I love the Tuesday nights. I love what's happening and I look forward to it as well. So I'll connect with you again next Tuesday night, every Tuesday night. You know the time. Here comes the car hauler and I'll talk to you guys in a week. All right, man, here it is. And I will see you. Bye.